welcome to Washington, Pennsylvania and Cameron Stadium, the site of today's matchup in week nine of BAC play between the Case Western Reserve Spartans and the Washington and Jefferson Presidents, all live on KDK Plus. Hi everyone, welcome to the Inside the Broadcast booth. I'm Austin Bechtel, pleased to be joined alongside Donnie Chedrick, the third member of our crew, Robert Mangina, will join us in just a moment. Washington and Jefferson coming off of a loss to Carnegie Mellon, now two losses on the season. For Case Western Reserve, though, only one loss and for a pretty solid year so far. Yeah, Case Western, they uh, Austin, they have a chance to uh, make something happen late in the season whenever it comes to winning this conference. They need a few things to go their way, of course. Uh, Grove City sort of running the roost in the PAC. They've beaten all of the big dogs in the conference, so they have to slip up not once but twice because of a tiebreaker, and that's going to be tough to do, but... Case and W and J still plenty to play for. Grove City undefeated on the season. One of the high impact guys to watch out for for Case Western is up front. Caden Tong, a difference maker. Yeah, Caden Tong, he is one of the best defensive players in the entire President's Athletic Conference, uh, and really a guy that runs a defense that is one of the best in the entire nation at the Division Three level. Fifty three tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks. That's good enough for second in the President's Athletic Conference. He also has a forced fumble this season, so he can do a little bit of everything coming off the edge for that Case defense. Case Western, the best scoring defense in the PAC, six best in the entire NCAA, and is going to try to slow down Jake Pugh. Yeah, Jake Pugh, he's the guy to look out for on the other side, the W&J quarterback. Undersized guy, 5'11", just 195, but the junior having himself a great season, nearly 2,000 yards, 22 touchdowns to just five picks. He also has a couple of touchdowns on the ground, has completed nearly 63% of his throws. He leads the PAC in touchdown passes, completion percentage, and he's second in passing yards. Overall, what are the keys to the game for the Spartans and the Presidents to pull out a victory here today? Well, the keys to the game first for Case Western, the defense is going to run the show. That's something that Coach Debelak said uh, on his call earlier this week. Uh, I mentioned Caden Tong. They have a lot of guys that can get after uh, the quarterback, and you said it. They have the sixth best uh, overall defense in the entire nation. So that's something that you have to look to on the Case Western side of things. Run the ball as well. These guys have a handful of players that can run the football and keep the ball in your possession. And for W and J, best offense versus best defense when it comes to the President's Athletic Conference. It'll be a matchup of the Titans on both sides of the ball. Top offense that W and J has, the top defense that Case Western has. Use your weapons if you're W and J. Three receivers that can mark off big plays. You have Jacob McCosco, 18.9 yards per catch. John Paduzzi, 18.6 yards per catch. Anthony Rosati as well. Uh, he can be a big play threat. So you have multiple guys that can get things done offensively for the chunk plays. Case Western and Washington and Jefferson. It's coming up next, all here on KDKA+. Plus. What keeps you moving? Is it your grandkids learning to ride a bike or Fido wanting to go for walks? At Washington Health System Center for Orthopedic Excellence, our highly trained team offers a wide variety of services, all tailored to your specific needs. Don't let pain or injury stop you any longer. Choose Washington Health System for your orthopedic care and take your first steps towards recovery and a healthier, more active life. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and event space for your next event. For more information, visit voodoobrewery.com. Back here in Washington, let's send it out to the third member of our crew, Robert Mangino, down on the sideline. Austin, I talked to both coaches before the game, Sirianni and Debelak, and they say it's all about balance and containment. Sirianni wants to contain the quarterback for Case Western Reserve. He can do it with his passing arm. He can do it with his legs. And when it comes to the balance side, number one in the conference in passing, but they have to start and have some aspect of a running game. Now, on the Case Western side, they want to contain Pew. Obviously, the number one passer in the pack, they want to be able to keep him in check. 
And when it comes to the balance side, they don't want to be too run heavy. They want to make sure they continue to have that run pass balance that they've had throughout the season so far. Thank you, Mangino. And yeah, it's it's going to be a tough challenge. This is a Case Western defense that is solid in every way that you look at it. Scoring defense, Donnie, they're only allowing 7.4 points per game. Washington and Jefferson, high up-tempo offense, first in the PAC, 39 points a game. Yeah, Case Western, first in scoring defense, first in total defense, third in run defense. Not that that's a huge factor tonight because w &J doesn't have the best run game in the conference. Third, or I'm sorry, first against the pass. So it's a great uh, complement to each other. We're going to see best versus best. Uh, best passing offense, best passing defense on display. Case Western kicks it away, and the Presidents will begin with the ball first. Past the 15, 20-yard line. Washington and Jefferson will start at about the 22 after the run back. It brings out Jake Pugh and the Presidents offense. Washington and Jefferson coming off of a loss last week to Carnegie Mellon. A huge loss, and pretty much hope's gone that the Presidents can find a way to win the conference. Can even make the NCAA playoffs. Jake Pugh at quarterback, John Peduzzi, Anthony Rosati, Jacob McCosco. So the main playmakers to watch out for. Justin Huss back in the lineup with Troy Volpatti in the backfield. First handoff goes to Huss. Huss with good running room. Close to a first down at the 31. He's decked at the 30. Gonna pick him up nine on the first offensive play of the game. Yeah, Sean Torres made the tackle, the man in the middle for that Case Western defense. A nice hole on the right side from the W and J offensive line. So credit to those guys for a nine yard pickup on first down. Justin Huss, the senior, 5'9", 180 from Derry High School. Gets another carry. Huss bounces to the near side of the field, picks up the first down and still going. Huss brought down at the 35. Strong run for Justin Huss before he's brought down by DJ Wolf from his safety spot. There was a chance that Huss was taken down to the backfield there, but Wolf, a, a, a good job uh, to get up there around the line of scrimmage. A short game, but good enough for the first down. Keep an eye on Caden Tong on the defensive line. A.J. Dodowski was the PAC Defensive Player of the Week last week as well. As Pugh looks to throw, first pass goes complete. Paduzzi with running room, pass midfield. 40, 30, Paduzzi off to the races and brought down at the 25. John Paduzzi found space in the middle of the field and a clip dump off from Jake Pugh to find him and let Paduzzi do the rest. And Pugh had a little pump fake, and then he found his man across the middle, and there really wasn't anybody back. There wasn't that center fielder type safety back for Case Western. Paduzzi, he averages 18.6 yards per reception. That'll certainly help out the average there. Hand off to DeRosa. DeRosa with running room pass to 2015, and DeRosa is brought out of bounds. Close to another Washington and Jefferson first down. Pickup of 12, decked at the 13th. Really impressive drive from the president so far. Every run play has gone off that right side. And they have seen positive yardage on each and every play. This is impressive right down the field in about 90 seconds. Running to the side of senior captain, right guard, Angelo Frattini, Eddie Nakotra as well. Right side of the line as Pew makes the handoff over the middle, passes, caught. Rosati on the reception. And Rosati was hit hard. And it picked up about six yards. Yeah, very quick play action. <clears throat> the slant by Rosati across the middle. He hauls that in. He's that slot guy, smaller guy, 5'7", 165-pound junior. But again, that's a nice little chunk on first down. Second and four, handoff goes to Volpatti. Volpatti up the middle. Pyle continues to push forward. And now whistle dead at the five, maybe four and a half yard line. It'll be third and short coming up. Head coach Mike Sirianni in his 21st season leading the Presidents. A 181-44 and 44 overall record entering the game today. This is the first time in over 20 years, he told us. He is not calling the offensive plays. Aaron Kreps is the play caller today. Assistant coach. As coach Sirianni wants to focus more on the Defensive side, special teams, all aspects of being a head coach. Jake Pugh runs near the goal line. Pugh powers his way into the end zone. 
Touchdown, Washington and Jefferson. Jake Pugh from five yards out for the first points of the game. Flag thrown in the end zone after the touchdown, but a great RPO from the president's offense, and Pugh read it perfectly. The edge slipped in, bit on that fake to the tailback, and Pugh was able to not only get enough for the first down, he was able to get into the end zone. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, Number 12, W&J. That penalty be assessed on the kickoff. So the penalty goes on Jake Pugh. As you heard by Anthony Lascola, our head referee here today. Ricky Hunter on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good hold by Garrett Hinsdale. Hunter's kick is up and good. 7-0, Washington and Jefferson strikes first. 11-52 to go in the first quarter of play. Presidents out in front. Why call two men in a truck? If you're like Joe, you need to move your business without moving a single meeting. The word stop isn't in your vocabulary. You want it handled with no hitches, no glitches, and no sweat. That's why you call two men in a truck. Two men in a truck. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready, ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College, are you ready? Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. Sirianni has to be pretty pleased with what he saw on the first drive. Washington and Jefferson has outscored opponents now 94 to 25 in the first quarter of play. Case Western, how about this? Came into today's game outscoring opponents in the first quarter 52 to 6. More points allowed in the first quarter in the first couple minutes of the game than throughout the entire season for the Spartans. Run back past the 30, 35, and Finally brought down near the 40-yard line. So, solid field position for the Case Western Reserve Spartans after the run back by T.J. Yoder. Brings out Alex Fromberg, senior quarterback. Bridgewater, New Jersey, 94 of 167 on the year. Over 1,300 yards passing, 13 touchdowns, four picks. Gabe Dusler. Gage Dusler, one of the key running backs in the backfield. Keep an eye on, as well as Ethan Dolum and Noah Coyne, that wide receiver. Ball at the 39-yard line. Man in motion towards the near side. Fake the handoff. Fromberg running far side. Fromberg takes off and runs out of bounds. After a short pickup of a couple yards to the 41. And we're going to see Fromberg has a lot of that ability, Austin. He, he's somebody that can beat you with his arm and his legs. So we see a little example of that there. Short gain on first down. Defensively for Washington and Jefferson, no Jared Timmons. Dawson Dietz, Avery Keep up front. Zach Valentine in the starting lineup for Timmons. Justin Johns at middle linebacker. Tanner Volpatti, the dependable outside linebacker from Bethel Park. Handoff goes up the middle. Another short pickup on the run, only two yards. Carry goes to Gage Dusler. And Dusler, who entered today with over 400 yards rushing, 96 total rushing attempts, sets up third and six. Head coach Greg Debelak is in his 20th season 
leading Case Western. Two very long tenured head coaches at the helm here today. Between Mike Sirianni and Greg Debelak. Third down and six. Man in motion towards the near side is Ethan Dahlem. Time for Fromberg. Throws towards the near side. Incomplete. Was trying to connect with Michael Wykowski. Not able to do so, though, when the Spartans go three and out. Wykowski more of a big play threat on the outside. The 6'1 senior. You see there that throw just behind him. So Wykowski able to get a hand on it, but he didn't really have much of a chance at it. He averages over 19 yards per reception. Only 14 grabs this year, but it's gone for almost 270 yards. Not a great response for the Spartans. They are punting it away, and now that W&J offense who's feeling some moxie, they're going to come right back out here. Anthony Rosati's back deep. High kick. Rosati signals for a fair catch, and on a dive, lost it. Ball is out. Scramble for it and out of bounds. The football could not be corralled by either side, so Washington and Jefferson catches a break. Almost very costly on that far sideline. And that that sideline has to be your best friend in that situation if you're a, a punt returner and you see that ball get away from you if you muff the punt. So luckily, W&J gets it back. A really strong first drive from this president's offense. Methodical. Really, it was seemed pretty easy for the presidents going right down the field on that first drive. So Jake Pugh starts out at the 12. First down and 10. Fake the handoff, roll to the near side. There is an open man and it's caught. That's Rosati. Out of bounds and pick up of about five. Yeah, and you're gonna be able to see here on the replay that that really wasn't Jake Pugh's first option, but, but he kept his options open. That's the important thing. He found the man out of the backfield and Rosati able to at least Grab a, a decent chunk there on first down. So now it's second down and medium. Again, another positive play. We haven't seen this Case Western defense force anything negative just yet. Handoff goes to Huss. Towards the middle of the field. and Doesn't go for much. Maybe one yard, if anything. Sets up third and a couple. This Case Western... Defense has been so great. Only allowed 88 total first downs on the year. Seven points per game. Just over seven points per game allowed this year. Washington and Jefferson already with a touchdown on the board. Shotgun for Pew. Pew decides to take off with it, slides and picks up the first down. Had the option to pitch it if he wanted to to Huss. And it looks like the officials are ruling Jake Pugh short. Is so we, we saw it last week. We had a yep. great example in this Pitt. area about a quarterback sliding a little bit too early. I had that thought in my mind when I saw Pugh beginning his slide. He had a lot of room out there still to go. Too. That I wasn't sure if he got the first down, and they are marking him a yard short. So uh, a bit of a mistake there from the veteran quarterback. They have to bring out the punting unit. It's where you first begin the process of the slide where you are marked down. So Ricky Hunter comes on out the punt. Hunter gets it away, a little bit of pressure there. Low kick, fair catch signaled for and made by Yodel, Yoder rather, at the Washington and Jefferson 48. So Case Western this season, six to one overall, win at Teal to begin the year, then an early bye in week two. An overtime loss to Grove City. Undefeated, 27-24, the victory for the Wolverines. And after that, Case Western has just dominated opponents. Geneva, Bethany, St. Vincent, Westminster. 35-0, the final score against Waynesburg last week. Three shutouts on the year for the Spartans defense. And you see where that you see where that bye week is on that graphic and on their schedule. Week two, that's a tough week to have your bye. Run up the middle and gang tackled down by a couple of different presidents, including Volpatti. Gage Dusler did not have much running room and only got a yard. So Washington and Jefferson will change up defensively a little bit, bringing another linebacker. After Jontez Strozier was out there, a couple of defensive backs were in the pattern. It's 
Second down and nine at the 47. Romberg pitches it out. Dusler with running room. Dusler brought down by Justin Johns, but not before making his way to the 43. A little pitch play here for Romberg. Tosses, tosses it to Dusler. And really good starting field position for Case Western on this drive. You don't want an opportunity like this to go to waste. So we could already be flirting with four down territory for the Spartans. They are right around the 40 yard line, uh, depending on how they want to play the field position game. If they don't get a first down here, we could see the offense stay out there. Third and four at the 42. Fromberg with time, pass over the middle is intercepted. Tanner Volpatti running past the 40 yard line and tripped up right there. Well, Patty on the interception takes it away for the president. I'm actually surprised there's no flag on the field. I thought that W and J absolutely had a had an offsides penalty coming so their too. way. I thought that was a free play for Case Western. I don't know if we'll be able to see the full thing here. So I think that might have been in the thought process for Fromberg because he knew he got a defensive lineman to jump. No flag was thrown. And as he throws it up in the air, it gets intercepted. So W and J kind of lucking out there, but you could see at the very start of that replay, there was absolutely a guy in the neutral zone on W and J's side of things. So they get away with one there, but hey, sometimes it doesn't break your way. Hughes pass is caught by McCosco. McCosco gets hit at the 48. A couple yards short of a first down. So really everything's gone Washington and Jefferson's way after a loss last week to Case Western, to Carnegie Mellon, rather, and just going out there and somewhat doing everything that they want to do against Case Western here and really without much problems. Yeah, this is a spot where Coach Debelak, he's going to have to make sure that his squad is settled down a bit because I'm sure there are some guys over there fired up because I'm sure they saw the same thing that we saw from up here and they know that maybe they should still have the football. Pew keeps it, has running room, past the 45, takes a big hit at the very end of it, and flags come in. Shot was delivered by Sean Torres, the middle linebacker. That'll be an extra 15. Yeah, Coach Sirianni, you see him fired up on that W and J sideline. So this will be an extra 15 for the presidents on the end of the run. There is a discussion by the officials. Maybe to see if this will be called. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary rough, this late hit out of bounds. Defense number five, 15 yard penalty, first down. So it goes on Dominic Size rather the cornerback who came up and made the stop on the big hit on Pew that forced the penalty. Yeah, Torres already had Pew in the process of being tackled as he went near the sideline and then Size came running up. The corner who leads the President's Athletic Conference in interceptions. So he's certainly not a guy you want to see uh, getting those penalties. Five picks to lead the way in the PAC. Going to need a big play here defensively for Case Western. Pew across the middle for Rosati, incomplete. DJ Wolf broke it up. Second down coming up from the 27 yard line. And a pass across the middle for Jake Pugh. Puts enough touch on it to get over Sean Torres in the middle of that defense. But a nice breakup in the secondary. So now second and 10 for that W and J offense, but inside the 30. Primetime action here at Cameron Stadium. Pew's pass to the near side is caught by McCosco. Taken out of bounds by size. Made it to the 22. Pickup of five. Brings up third and five. Zach Cernudo comes onto the field for the presidents. Kobe DeRosa in there as the back. It's something kind of different here from the presidents, really taking their time before running plays, something that you know, fast-paced tempo offense we're so used to with Sirianni. This pass is caught by Rosati. Great reception made over the middle of the field past the 10-yard line. 
And a good strike from Jake Pugh to drop it in the bucket. Yeah, that's a heck of a throw from Jake Pugh across the middle. He had to stand in there in the face of pressure, sort of make that throw unbalanced, and also credit Rosati on the other end. As you see on the replay, Pugh sort of taking the beginning of a hit as he made that throw, and he had to put trust into his receiver. Rosati there to make the play. Already multiple grabs for number seven in black. So against the best scoring defense in the conference, Jake Pugh looks towards the end zone incomplete, trying to connect with Troy Patty. Sets up second and goal from the six. And if you're Washington and Jefferson, being able to strike for two scores against Case Western, something that's just so critical overall for the game. Yeah, I mean, having two scores against the Case Western defense, that's something a lot of the teams in the conference haven't been able to say over the course of a whole game. And in the midst of the first 10 minutes of action, you have a chance of doing it. Pew lines up in the pistol with Volpatti in the back. Handed off his way, Volpatti up the middle, not much there. Caden Tong was there at the point of attack to bring him down at the five. We haven't seen much of Tong's impact on the game so far. He does lead his team in tackles with 53, eight and a half tackles for loss. He's able to beat his man and get over towards the middle of that offensive line from the defensive end position. Seven and a half sacks too, look out for that. He is, or seven sacks, he is second in the PAC with that total. Michael Kelly was also there at his nose guard spot. Grad student at six foot 250. Third and goal from the five. Pew in the shotgun. Sends Paduzzi in motion. Pew looking for Paduzzi. Paduzzi's got it into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington and Jefferson. Jake Pew to John Paduzzi, five yards out. And the president strike. Second touchdown of the game. Yeah, nice little crossing pattern across the middle. And Paduzzi able to catch himself free. And by the time he has the ball in his hands, Dominic Sai is unable to track him down before he's able to get into the end zone. W and J, the offense, you talked about it. Coach Sirianni not calling the plays this week. Looks pretty impressive through the first 10 plus minutes. 4.18 to go in the first quarter of play. 14 to nothing, Washington and Jefferson out in front against Case Western. We raised $5,000. When you purchase life insurance and annuity products from GBU Life, you also have more opportunities to give back to your community. GBU matches donations you make up to $1,000 per member. I have GBU Life Insurance. Oh, wow. I have a GBU Youth Policy. Whoa. We've, We've got, got GBU, GBU annuities. annuities. Hey. Our $5,000 just turned into $10,000. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of big checks. checks. Find out more at GBU.org. Maya, can you come in here, please? Already. Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Action. Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. I started working out with my dad when I was 12 years old. He said, well, everybody else is sleeping, you up working. It's gonna pay off for you. <laughs> Biggest decisions I ever had to make my junior year. I had my daughter at the time, so, you know, I'm like, I gotta provide. You know, I had the opportunity to leave early. I had to make a decision. Was I gonna leave or was I gonna come back to college for an extra year? I'm about to cry, talking about this shit. Um, once I made that decision to come back, my mindset wasn't just to be good, it was to be great. 14-0 Washington and Jefferson. As Case Western will get the football. Donnie, it was one of your keys to the game. Could Washington and Jefferson, good offense, beat good defense on the other side for Case Western. It's been the case so far. Yeah, they are proving that right now that they're number one ranked offense in the conference, specifically the number one ranked passing offense in the conference. They're going right down the field on Case Western and now another big play for the president's coming on the kickoff. Braden Janak on special teams makes the tackle at the 18 yard line and just nothing going right for Case Western. 
Yeah, this is a point early on, and Coach Debelak, uh, a, a veteran on that sideline, as is Coach Sirianni. But if either coach was in this situation, he would know that they got to settle things down a little bit on that entire sideline, know that there is a ton of time still left to go, a two-score game uh, that can get right back into it in an instant. Fromberg's pass over the middle is caught. Off to the races we go. 40, 45, midfield. Lots of running room for Coyne into Washington and Jefferson territory. Noah Coyne makes it all the way to the 33. Yeah, I mean, I said it could happen in an instant, and that instant almost happened before I could finish my own sentence. Coyne with a huge gainer. Averages almost 20 yards per reception. Well over 500 yards receiving on the season. He has five touchdowns. Uh, the 6'4 junior trying to energize that Case Western sideline. They, they need a touchdown drive here, and they'll feel pretty good about where things are at. Now over 500 receiving yards on the season for Coyne. Ball on the near side, hash at the 30. Fromberg looks at the near side, dumps it off. Dusler, nothing there. Strong defensive play made. Sean Berardino, no gain. Back to the 33. Really strong defensive play by Berardino. 6-1 junior, you'll see on the replay out on the edge here, he just sheds the blocker, and that's easy work for him once that happens. Hold up the runner, you get the gang tackling happening. No gain for Case Western on first and 10. Three receivers to the far side. Dussler is the back, standing to the right, standing to the left of Fromberg. 10 on the play clock. Fromberg with plenty of time, takes the snap. Now looks to take off. Fromberg using his legs to get decked at the 36. And once again, the president's collapsed in. Aiden Thomas on the stop. That'll be the second sack of the season for Aiden Thomas. The 6'1", 250 pound sophomore. He will move around on that defensive front. He'll play a little bit of defensive end. He'll play mostly defensive tackle. But right there, able to catch up to the, the quarterback that'll use his legs. And now it is third down and behind the sticks. Third and 13 for Fromberg with time. Fromberg steps up, delivers, pass caught. Coyne at the 20. Lose the change. Noah Coyne, the junior 6'4 wide receiver, helps set up Case Western in the red zone. Yeah, simple post pattern there for Noah Coyne. Able to get open easily. Defender playing back a little bit and good vision from Fromberg to find his top target. Good enough for a first down, you keep the sticks moving. Alex Fromberg in his first season as the starter, Drew Saxton was here at Case Western for what seemed like forever. Talking to head coach Greg Devilak about it as Dusler up the middle. Lots of running room to the 11, a pickup of nine. And Saxton going back to him, he's now on the, the coaching staff for the Spartans, and there's really no better guy to learn from if you're Alex Fromberg, somebody fresh to the game, and somebody who, honestly, if he had better size, Drew Saxon would have been playing at a much higher level. Yeah. Uh, that kid was an elite, elite quarterback. Very solid player. Now is a chance to coach up Fromberg. Second down and one. A minute remaining in the first quarter. Fromberg hands it off, Dusler. Dusler picks up a first down. It'll set up first down and goal at the eight. So Case Western, after two touchdowns scored by Washington and Jefferson, putting together its best offensive drive. Yeah, this is a time to close one out. You want to end this drive with six points and a pending point after. 40 seconds on the game clock, 20 on the play clock. Pistol formation for Fromberg with Dusler the back. Sandy behind him. Ball lined up middle of the field. Watch the clock roll down to five. Dusler on the carry, doesn't get much. Scampers his way to the six. Avery Keith got his hands on him first. That play might end this first quarter, but Case Western still with a good opportunity to put points up as we begin the second. And it will, 14 to nothing. Washington and Jefferson out in front against Case Western. Let's go to the second quarter of play. Live from Cameron Stadium on KDK Plus.
It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and event space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission. Providing great patient care. Delivering babies. Healing hearts. Detecting cancer early. Stitching wounds. And holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years. Washington Health System. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. Fourteen nothing, Washington and Jefferson. We begin the second quarter of play. Second and goal at the six for Case Western. Dixler is the back, standing behind Fromberg. Now moves to his right. Fromberg takes the snap with time. Fromberg to the end zone. Pass is caught. Touchdown, Noah Coyne. From six yards out, Case Western gets on the board. They cut the deficit. That touchdown looked easier than it probably should have been. But again, Coin just has that size advantage over anybody else in the secondary. And when that ends up being the case, you just find that separation if he has any of it and try to find your top target out there. So another touchdown for Noah Coyne. That is number six on the season. 14th passing touchdown for Alex Fromberg. Gabriel Petrosi, the freshman, is on to kick the extra point. Which is up and good. There is a flag thrown. It looks like Washington and Jefferson was a little bit too eager to try to block that kick. Bruno Fabricki, the one on the edge. It is offsides and should be declined by the Spartans. Offside. Defense. Penalty is declined. Extra points good. Washington and Jefferson on the season's five and two overall. And after lopsided wins against St. Vincent, Bethany, and Westminster, the Westminster one a little bit surprising, but Titans are down this year. Teal 56 to 14, and losses to Grove City, Carnegie Mellon. A crushing loss to Grove City, which really you know, put a damper on this season for Washington and Jefferson. Allegheny was a 35 to seven, 35, 14 game at one point. Allegheny scored late, had a chance. It was a fumble. It was a little dual possession. If Allegheny would have recovered on a kickoff to Washington and Jefferson, Gators could have had a chance to tie it. And then after the bye week, the loss to Carnegie Mellon, second loss, crushing blow for the Presidents. And it's inspired change from this team as run back is taken to the 40-yard line. It's 30-yard line. It's a strong run for the Presidents. Cam Mulvaney on the run back. Now we're going to see this offense come out and try to put together a touchdown drive for the third time tonight in just over 10 minutes of this game. They were able to put up two touchdowns on a Case Western defense that only allows about one touchdown per game. Owen Patricic is the back. Patricic, who was the leading rusher for Washington and Jefferson for a majority of the season. I think they got the left tackle here with a bit of a flinch. Would be Elijah Staub, 77. Five. Number 77. Five yard penalty, first down. Five yard penalty will move the ball back to the 26 yard line.
Jake Pugh, 22 touchdown passes on the season, only five picks, 63% completion rate. Runs with it. Pugh spins off of a tackler and is brought down at the 29. John Torres made the stop. That RPO game has been working pretty well for this w &J offense so far tonight. Pew showing that he is more of a threat on the ground than I think what he is given credit for. Coming into tonight's action, uh, he had 140 yards and two touchdowns on the ground this year. He has already added one to that number tonight, but he is reading those defensive ends well, those edge rushers, and he's keeping the football more often than not. Made some good decisions so far as he dumps it off near side, incomplete for Cernudo. Pew picked up three on the last rush. The incompletion sets up third down and 12. Presidents need to get to the 41 to convert. Case Western's defense now with a chance to get the Presidents off the field. You see the replay there. That one just out of reach for Cernudo, the H-back. But a third down here early, and if Case Western can get the football back, then you talk about evening things up, and we're right back to where we started. Cernudo goes in motion towards the near side. Pew lines up in the shotgun. Two receivers far side. Pew steps up. Throws downfield. Open man, Faduzzi. Spins his way near midfield. Picks up a first. John Faduzzi found an open spot right near the Case Western sideline. And Jake Pugh was able to deliver a strike. A couple of things for Jake Pugh on that play. He had to be cognizant of where the line of scrimmage was. He was getting awfully close to going over. He also gives a little point. You saw there on the replay to the man out in the flat, one of the running backs. And then he ends up throwing the football down the field. That little point could have almost played as a pump fake to the defense as it opened things up for Paduzzi. Run to the near side. Puts racing with the running room. It's rather Huss. Justin Huss tiptoes his way. Down the sideline and out of bounds at the 37. Strong run for Justin Huss and another first down now into Spartans territory. Justin Huss, 215 yards rushing on the season entering today in six games played. Has battled some injuries this year. Hurt his knee last year and was a struggle for Huss but was able to bounce his way back this year into the fold as Haas bounces it to the far side. Justin Haas past the 30, 25, 20. Haas 15, 10, five, diving towards the pylon, but out of bounds inside the five and marked down at the one yard line. And you can still see that Justin Haas has a lot of speed. He gets to the outside, he gets to that edge and he's able to turn up field. He can be lethal, a high snap there. Then he had to change direction. He goes off to the right. That play was originally supposed to go either up the middle or to the left side. He almost houses that play, takes it down inside the five yard line. And again, the president's offense going down the field like a hot knife through butter. Huss with more yards on that play than he had the entire first quarter. Two rushes for 14 yards. DeRosa now the back. Pew gives it to DeRosa. DeRosa towards the goal line, spins his way. No signal yet. DeRosa is down at the one. We'll set up second down and goal. Presidents go quickly to the line. Tush push. Pew under center. Push forward. One Spartan jumped over the line. No signal yet. Being marked short. It'll be third and goal. Mike Sirianni taking a play for his brother Nick on the Eagles. Yeah, and his little brother tells people that not everybody can always execute that to perfection. We'll see if the presidents want to try it one more time. You know, the Eagles run it so well, you wonder why don't just all teams do this, give an attempt at it. Didn't work on second and goal, now third and goal. Pugh goes out of the shotgun. DeRosa is the back. Ball on the far side hash. Peduzzi goes in motion, but movement on the presidents up front will back this up. Well, and you see First frustration. Start. Offense, number 55, five yard penalty. Eddie Nakocha, the right tackle moved early and will move the ball from the one inch line to the six. 
Could end up being a great defensive stand for this case Western defense. They looked like they were about to give up another touchdown. W and J had it inside the five. Ball got down to the one. Uh, they were able to defend the tush push. And now a false start penalty on the president's third down. And the ball is back around that five yard line. Now we have another whistle. And it looks like a timeout called timeout by Washington field. and Jefferson. Washington and Jefferson. It's their first time out of the half. Presidents want to talk about it with 11.01 to go. Ball at the six, third and goal coming up. Presidents up by seven on KDK Plus. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready, ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready? Looking to escape a dead-end job? We can help. Apply at Two Men in a Truck today for a good job that can become a great career. Sure, I'll be there at 5 a.m. I can binge one more episode. Let's face it, you don't always set yourself up for success. Five more minutes. Where are my work shoes? But GBU Life makes it easy with life insurance and annuity products to help secure your future so you have the freedom to do more of what you love. Congratulations! Retiring early must be nice. What are you going to do first? I think I'll sleep in. Secure your future today. Visit GBU.org. Third and goal at the six after the W and J timeout. So what did the presidents decide to do after the penalty moved the ball back from the only one inch, one foot line? Decision time for Aaron Kreps, the play caller today. Shotgun for Pew, DeRose to the back, faking his way. Pew, under pressure and brought down. Jake Pew had absolutely no chance. Broke it up right away. JT Cooper on the sack. Yeah, JT Cooper with his second sack of the season. It comes at a huge time. Credit to that Case Western defense. And Cooper, he basically got in there unblocked. You had a tackle coming around, trying to pull on him. He didn't get there in time. Cooper ran free. Pew had no chance. And that Case Western defense pushing back to the W&J offense finally. Ricky Hunter on to attempt the field goal. A 33 yarder would be his long on the season. Hunter's kick is up and good. Ricky Hunter now three for three on field goal attempts. And puts the presidents ahead by 10. 17 to seven now. Other games from around the PAC as they go. Allegheny with a win against the Teal Tomcats, 27 to three. Thriller at St. Vincent. Westminster wins it 22 to 20. Grove City all over. Bethany Wolverines remain undefeated, 56 to 14. Geneva takes care of Waynesburg on the road, 43 to 29. And primetime action here tonight. Final game in the conference, Case Western Reserve and Washington and Jefferson from Cameron Stadium. We got a good one so far. Yeah, we, we had a great stand from the Case Western defense. Now, field goal there still makes it a two possession game. So you have to take what you can get for W and J. But you're a few minutes ago thinking, we're about to be up by two touchdowns yet yeah. again. We're about to be 20 plus points on the board on this Case Western defense that is top 10 in the entire country and allows seven points per game. Uh, not so fast. Case Western had something to say about that. Now they'll get the football back and try to put another six up on the board. Into the end zone for a touchback. This is the second most points that have been scored against Case Western all season. The most being 27 against Grove City, second game of the year. And, of course, that Grove City team in route to win this President's Athletic Conference. So it only makes sense that that team 
has the most points scored against Case Western. And you really think that was an overtime game, overtime loss, what could have been for Case Western with such a stout defense that is taking care of really everybody outside of Grove City. Bromberg hands it off. A couple yards for Dusler. Makes his way to the 28 and a pickup of three. Dusler has been around for a while for Case Western. Has been the featured back for some time. 100 rushes on the season. Three touchdowns to his credit. From Avon Lake, Ohio. Ton of Case Western players from that area. Recruit specifically Ohio, Pennsylvania. Ton of Whippeal kids on the team as well as the pass is ruled incomplete. Across the far side of the field and does not able to toe drag to stay in bounds and pick up a first down. Yeah, and remember at the college level, you need just one foot. Inbounds, you don't need to worry about tapping both of them. Key third down here for the Case Western offense. You want to stay on the field. Get, allow your defense to catch the breath a little bit. Yeah, Wykowski was just not able to get that one foot to drag. Third and seven at the 28. Fromberg flushed out near side of the field, looking deep, incomplete. Was trying to connect with Riley Nurick. But Nurek just did not see the ball in time to try to come back and make the catch. Case Western goes three and out and has the punt. And from the angle that that throw came from, that was a, a going to be a really tough play to pull off because as Fromberg was rolling out, he was also angling backwards. And he was going to have to put pretty much everything on that ball to get to the receiver. It falls short. So another strong stand from Washington and Jefferson defensively. Gabe Vara has got to be pretty happy with what he's seen from his presidents as they block the punt. Picked up by Washington and Jefferson for the touchdown. What a turn of events for W and J. Kobe DeRosa finds the end zone after the block. Yeah, kind of just snuck in there in a very clean bounce. And easily taking that in for the score. A splash play on special teams. Always key one third of the game. And you see how it can turn things around. Now all of the sudden, W and J up 17 points. Huge play by the presidents. And wow, if things really continue to go Washington and Jefferson's way. Everything that the presidents could ask for truly has gone right. 24 to seven is the score, 9.15 to go in the second quarter. Presidents blocked the punt. And scored as W and J is stunning Case Western. Overall in the standings, Grove City undefeated. Carnegie Mellon at 7-1. Grove City actually has its bye the final week of the year. Case Western right ahead of Washington and Jefferson. Pre President's trying to flip that script around and jump Case Western. Westminster at 5-3 overall. Austin Bechtel, Donnie Chedrick alongside Robert Mangino on the sideline. As Case Western will start at the 23. If you're the Spartans, what do you try to do here and really not panic? Yeah, I mean, you certainly don't have to be in a position where you're panicking. Uh, panicking. I mean, it is a three-score game, but... So there's still nine minutes left to go in the first half. There is a ton of time in this game, roughly 40 minutes of gameplay out of the 60 that you play. So you have two-thirds of the game still left at your disposal here. Just do what you originally intended to do. You don't have to 
immediately just go to the air more often now that it's a three-score game early. You can run your offense as usual. There's still plenty of time to do so. Zakai Simmons blocked the punt. Kobe DeRosa took it from five yards out into the end zone for the score. As the first down run goes for a couple to the 25, a pickup of two. Second and seven. Take the handoff and Fromberg takes off. Up the middle with just not much there. Justin Johns was there, Dawson Dietz as well on the tackle. We'll set up third down and long. Let's send it to Mangino down on the sideline. Thank you very much, Austin. You know, Sirianni may not be calling plays on offense, but he is as energized and as involved in this game as ever before, driving his players to excel to greatness tonight. And so far with this lead 24-7, he's got to be thrilled. He's gotten a lot of answers to questions that the president's had coming into today. Fromberg steps up, tries to dump it off, and he falls down, felt the pressure, backtracked, and lost his footing. So again, Case Western can't get anything going offensively and has to punt. Yeah, and that time, it, trying to go vintage Ben Roethlisberger, not going to work out for Alex Fromberg. The multiple pump fakes, uh, one eventually so strong of a pump fake that he basically took himself off balance and made for the easy sack. Another punting situation here for the Case offense. Rosati is back deep. Washington and Jefferson. Not blocked this one. Second time we've seen a block at home for the Presidents this year. W and J just trying to get out of the way of that one. Marcus Harrell Jr. was close to the football blocking, but it will be Presidents football at the 43-yard line. Coming up after this, 24 to 7 with 7-12 to go in the second quarter. What keeps you moving? Is it your grandkids learning to ride a bike or Fido wanting to go for walks? At Washington Health System Center for Orthopedic Excellence, our highly trained team offers a wide variety of services, all tailored to your specific needs. Don't let pain or injury stop you any longer. Choose Washington Health System for your orthopedic care and take your first steps towards recovery and a healthier, more active life. My name is Loretta, and this is Special Olympics Pennsylvania. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is competition. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is leadership. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is life changing. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is unified. Special Olympics Pennsylvania is inclusion. President's football at the 43. As everything has gone W and J's way. 24 to 7 the score. Great field position to begin this next drive. Pew in the pistol. Hands it off. Well, Patty. Well, Patty into Case Western Reserve territory at the 49 and a pickup of eight. The presidents have been able to use a bevy of different running backs so far tonight, including Jake Pugh, who has carried the ball himself a few times, including for a touchdown, but Justin Huss, Troy Volpatti, Owen Patricic, uh, Zach Cernudo has been in the game uh, for a handful of snaps. They have a lot of different options to use out of that backfield, depending on what situation they want to be in. Pugh fakes the handoff and is able to corral it after bobbling it and throws it over to the far side of the field where the pass is caught. Reception made. For a WJ first down by Anthony Rosati, who is slow to get up. And Pew limping a little bit himself after the play. Officials timeout on the field. Injury timeout. And Rosati is still down. 
as he took the shot right there. It was kind of fell a little bit awkwardly to catch the football. Jake Pugh went over to check on his teammate and saw he's able to get to his feet and walk on over to the W&J sideline near side of the field. So it will be first down for the Presidents at the 44. Zach Seaman out there at wide receiver. Sophomore from Ohio, 5'11", 180 pounds. has been out there a couple of times, depending on the packages that the Presidents have used. Seen him come on the field and spell Zach Cernudo when WJ uses an extra tight end and instead of an extra wide receiver. So it's Seaman, McCosco, as well as John Peduzzi, the three wideouts. Raymond Holmes at tight end, H-back spot. Handoff goes to Justin Huss, and it's rather Owen Patricic. My apologies, on the carry, but was only able to get about a yard. Nate Sacallo came up from the safety spot and made that play, so it is a short gain for W and J. And Anthony Rosati is back out there in the slot near side of the field. Second down and nine for Pew. Opting to use a ton of the play clock down to five. Snaps it at three. Pew with time. Avoids the rush, far side of the field. Delivers deep down the field for Peduzzi, but out of bounds. Incomplete. Really just threw it out of bounds. No chance for Paduzzi unless he you know, had one of the best verticals you'd ever see in your life. Ball way over his head by about 10 yards. Yeah, really just a, a smart throw once he realized he didn't really have anything all the way down the field, but he did want to keep the defense guessing a bit. So Pew goes empty backfield now. Five wide receivers on the field. Pew with time. Tong delivered pressure incomplete. Pew was looking over the middle, but threw it behind Zach Seaman at the 25 30 yard line. And the presidents will have to punt. Yeah, we'll see on the replay. What happened here, had time to, to make the throw. A few, a few things at play there, ball was behind. The receiver also looks like he slipped at the end of the route. It did rain pretty much the entire duration of pregame, so can't imagine the field, even though it is the that grassy turf, is perfect. Ricky Hunter able to get the punt away. Low kick, but fielded on a fair catch at the 15. We want to thank our sponsors for being a part of our T3 College Football broadcast right here on KDK Plus, including Washington Health System, Voodoo Brewing Company, Two Men in a Truck, The Movers Who Care, GBU Life, and The Way Enterprises for being a part of our broadcast here on KDK Plus for the President's Athletic Conference season. It's turned out to be a beautiful night. With the lights shining brightly on Cameron Stadium, 59 degrees. Wind at six miles per hour, not too much of a factor. Fromberg rolls deep down the field, incomplete. Trying to connect with Riley Nurick right near the W&J sideline, but not able to connect. A little bit overthrown and good coverage as well by Bruno Fabricki. Nurik hasn't had much of a, an impact on this game at all. The 5'8 senior, 18 grabs, four touchdown receptions coming into tonight's action. Hasn't even been targeted all that much with the exception of that last play. Second down and 10 at the 15 yard line for Fromberg, who has time. Fromberg delivers, passes caught at the 20 and brought down out of bounds. Sakai so Simmons made the stop on the reception made by Michael Wykowski. And Wykowski made it for 
The game about seven. It'll be third down, needing the 25. Ball spotted at the 22. Case Western has won five games in a row entering today. Shotgun for Fromberg. Fake the handoff. Roll to the near side. Fromberg's pass thrown up for grabs. Incomplete. Volpatti had the coverage. There is a flag thrown very late on the far side of the field. Fromberg also was throwing that football as he was falling to the ground. Very dangerous play. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense. That penalty is declined. He's on the play. Fourth down. Trying to get it to Sean Michael James, the running back. But again, Case Western just not able to get anything going and pick up a first down. You know, the WJ offense is talked about a lot and given a lot of credit. WJ defensively really earning its respect. Yeah, the, the president's defense has been the shining group tonight. Uh, really the defense, and you can also credit the special teams on that punt block earlier. But that is sort of what we probably expected to see on the opposite end. We knew that we were getting a great passing attack in the W&J offense, but a great defense against that uh, on the Case Western side of things. And that's sort of what I expected. Not this score by any means, yeah. uh, but low scoring and a, a more defensive effort uh, from the Case Western side to where W&J couldn't get much going offensively. It hasn't been the case, though through the first uh, nearly 30 minutes. I'm a little surprised. I thought 24 points maybe would be all that it takes to win this game. And for Washington and Jefferson, the offense sets up shop at the 38. Good starting field position for Jake Pugh. Four and a half minutes to go. President with two timeouts. Pugh takes off. Pugh to the 45 and dives for a first down. Might be just a little bit short, though, before he went out of bounds, and will be the case. Eight-yard pickup for Pew. Again, another impressive run for Jake Pew. He gets up with a little hitch in his giddy-up, but sheds a couple of tackles there, nearly gets the first down. He did try to dive for the marker. They say he's two yards shy. Handoff goes up the middle. Not much there. Justin Huss was... Dancing in the backfield, but nothing amounted there as pressure from Michael Kelly right at the point of attack dropped him for a loss. So it sets up third down and about three yards at the 45. Three wide receivers line up on the near side of the field for Pew. Ball in the middle of the field as Pew will give it to Huss. Huss needs the 45 and won't get close. Caden Tong on the stop. Cooper was also in there defensively as Jake Pew looks off to the sideline in frustration as WJ will punt. Yeah, that was much needed for this Case Western defense because we're getting to the point where you're probably looking at your final drive of this first half. So you're going to see the Case Western offense come back out here and you want to see Alex Fromberg and company try to orchestrate something because if you're able to get into the end zone before halftime, Case also getting the ball to start the second half. So you could have a chance to build a good bit of momentum if you can go into the locker room and it's only a 10-point game. Good kick from Ricky Hunter. Fair catch signaled for at the 22-23 yard line by T.J. Yoder. So 2.43 remains. Case Western has it. Maybe just do whatever you can to put points on the board because you want to try to double up W and J. Points here and then points on the other side of the break. Yeah, which can, can really put yourself back in this. You can get the old double dip, perhaps. And if it's two touchdowns, we're almost right back to even. If you score here and W and J is unable to score before halftime, then you get the football right back at half. Fromberg with time in the pocket. 
Rolls out to the far side. Fromberg has lots of room if he elects to run. Throws downfield and the pass is caught. Huge play made by Ethan Dahlum from Upper St. Clair High School Junior at 5'10", 170. Multi-sport athlete in high school. Battled an injury in camp. And you'll hear more from Ethan during our halftime interview. Got a chance to talk to him at PAC Media Day. That's a heck of a play on both ends. Fromberg was facing some pressure. He rolled out to his left. Being a right-handed quarterback, he had to throw against his body, and then Dahlum throw was a hair behind him, but he high points and he makes the play. Fromberg, completion made. Wykowski with running room. Wykowski at the 35-30, flag thrown. As he was pushed out and... I'm not sure what this... I mean, I'm assuming this flag will be either holding or blocking the back, but... I'm going to be interested to see the replay because it didn't seem like anything happened. No, it didn't. Brandon Brown was there to help try to force him out. We'll take a look at it in a moment. Oh, a coin. Blocking the back. Number 14, offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Yeah, I was just about to say, Coyne was the one jumping around in frustration, looked very upset after the play, and he's the one that gets called. It's like right there, not much of anything. Maybe just a slight amount of contact. Ball at the 48. Under two minutes to go in the half. Shotgun for Fromberg. WJ brings pressure. Fromberg across the middle for Coyne incomplete. Coyne was looking for a marker, didn't get it. Yeah, I mean, it looked like there was more contact there than what certainly got called on the block in the back the play before. As Coyne kind of got crossed off his route a little bit, bumped off his route. So second and seven, second and two rather, at the 48. Deusler on the carry, picks up the first down. Makes it to the 45. Dawson Dietz makes the stop. Plenty of time for Case Western. Can take its time. Fromberg with time, pass is caught. Wykowski on the reception. Is able to get the first down, pick up of 11. Wykowski already a handful of grabs so far tonight. The senior from Painesville, Ohio. 14 receptions coming into tonight's action. Now we have an infraction. This is going to be on Case. That yeah, flag comes in and immediately pointing at Case. Snap infraction. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. First down. Jace Merritt, the senior center from Fort Worth, Texas. The guilty party on the call. So back to the ball to the 39. It'll be first down and 15. Alex Fromberg in the shotgun. Two receivers line up each side. Fromberg's pass delivered for a completion and another first down to Wykowski. As the rain begins to fall at Cameron Stadium. Yeah, Wykowski continues to be the shorthanded guy on the outside. Fromberg putting a lot of trust into this throw. And Zakai Simmons tried to jump the route. Try to pick the ball off, but just enough touch on it from Fromberg for the completion. So take a look up near the lights as the rain has really significantly picked up in the last minute or two from nothing to decent amount of rain as Fromberg's pass over the middle, incomplete. Wonder if the weather had any factor in that one. Ethan Dahlum would have been good enough for a first down at the 10 to set up first and goal, but not able to hold it in. And he found Dahlum in a pocket by himself. There were a couple defenders around, but Dahlum had a pretty clear lane to catch that ball, but it will fall incomplete. Second and 10, 58 seconds to go in the half. Fromberg with time, looking towards the end zone for Coyne. He's got it. Noah Coyne boxed out the defender, Bruno Fabricki, and made the catch. Touchdown, Case Western from 23 yards out. 
Second one tonight for Noah Coyne. And that's your top target. He's had a quiet drive, but he comes up big there. Great back shoulder action. Coyne goes up, high points the football again. He's going to have the size advantage over anybody in that secondary at 6'4", 200 pounds. He hauls in rece touchdown reception number seven on the year. And there's the first part of trying to double up the opposition for Case Western. Extra point is up and good. There is a flag. Uh, it looks like it's going to be offsides once again on W and J, something we've seen earlier today in this game. Offside. Defense. Penalties. Draw to the play. Extra points good. 52.9 left in the half. W and J was great defensively throughout the entire first half, but just a strong offensive drive. Good offense beat good defense there from Case Western. Yeah, and a much needed touchdown drive there from the Spartans. They, they go down the field. They have a couple of very impressive passes from Alex Fromberg to keep the drive moving, and they're able to finish it off as the rain picks up at Cameron Stadium. Take a look at the WJ cheerleaders. A lot to cheer about in this first half. Presidents will get the ball back with some time, still with two timeouts left as well as the kickoff bounces out of bounds and will be spotted at the 35. So a costly mistake from Case Western. We've said it a couple Free of times. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. The chance to double up w &J, but the Presidents here, good field position with time, with timeouts. Could try to get a field goal or even a touchdown on their own. So bring out Jake Pugh in the offense. Kobe DeRosa in at the back, in as the back. Raymond Holmes lines up as a tight end near side of the formation. Two receivers near side as well. Pugh hands it off to DeRosa. And DeRosa is able to get three, maybe four yards. That first play, pretty critical to determine what you're going to do the rest of the way on this drive. And only a short pickup for the Presidents, and Jake Pugh will run over to the sideline with Washington and Jefferson looking pretty content to just run out this half. Yeah, and I would say that where Case Western is right now, that the Spartans would be pretty content to let this clock run out because you're going into the locker room now down 10 instead of 17, and you get the football back to open the second half. So Case Western does have three timeouts, but will opt to just take them to the locker room. As four seconds separate the play clock and the game clock, Jake Pugh will just take a knee. And that does it for the first half of play. 24-14, to 14, the Washington and Jefferson Presidents lead the Case Western Reserve Spartans. You're watching KDKA Plus. Halftime coverage up next, as well as our discussion with Ethan Dahlum from PAC Media Day. Great to talk to him. A WPIA product, somebody pretty familiar with from Upper St. Clair. Saw a lot of his action, football, basketball, whatever it might be. As Case Western has done a great job in this game so far. Jumped out to an early advantage by decent amount. As let's send it now down to the field in Robert Mangino. Oh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties here from Coach Sirianni, but Robert Mangino will tell us what he had to say coming up a little bit later on, right here on KDK Plus as we reach the break. You want top quality roofing? Replacing a roof isn't just shingles. It's a complete engineered system. Being Pittsburgh's number one platinum preferred roofing replacement company, we offer free estimates from one of the most trusted and well-trained teams in the industry. With over 40 years in the business, JP Roofing is efficient and complete most roofing jobs in just one day. If you're looking to get your roof replaced, hire JP Roofing and Siding. Quality long remembered at a fair price. 
It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. Trout Plumbing is a registered and insured master plumber that services the South Hills. They offer a variety of services, including camera inspection and dye testing. Trout Plumbing also offers a veteran and senior citizen discount. When in doubt, call the Trout at 412-983-8106. Here at LaWay, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at LaWay is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. I started working out with my dad when I was 12 years old. He said, well, everybody else is sleeping, you up working. It's gonna pay off for you. <sighs> Biggest decisions I ever had to make my junior year. I had my daughter at the time, so, you know, I'm like, I gotta provide. You know, I had the opportunity to leave early. I had to make a decision. Was I gonna leave or was I gonna come back to college for an extra year? I'm about to cry, I'm talking about this shit. Um, once I made that decision to come back, my mindset wasn't just to be good, it was to be great. Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years, and their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids, and they showed up. Morning. Have a nice day at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. Welcome back. I'm Robert Mangino. We're at halftime. Washington and Jefferson leading Case Western Reserve. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, we'll have that interview with Ethan Dallum, the alum from Upper St. Clair, who's the wideout for Case Western. But first, we'll take a look at the top five plays in the pack, courtesy of Ethan Pazarski from Waynesburg. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the top five plays around the PAC. I'm your host, Ethan Spazarski, and I want to take some time now to walk through the top five plays around the President's Athletic Conference. The number five play of the week. We head down to Case Western Reserve University as they host Waynesburg. With the first touchdown of the game, running back Gage Dusler gives an electric 37-yard run into the end zone. The number four play of the week. This is coming off a special teams play. After Westminster had a field goal drive, they kicked it off to Allegheny. As Allegheny brought it forward, Westminster's Christian Snyder forced the fumble and recovered and was recovered by Westminster. Westminster capitalized, throwing a 25-yard touchdown and would give them a 10-0 lead. The number three play of the week. We head down to Geneva where Josh Seister gives his season-long rushing attempt with a 57-yard run going down to the Bethany 17-yard line. Geneva brought the ball to the end zone shortly after, giving them the first points of the game. The number two play of the week. We head down to Westminster again as the late fourth quarter as we get an amazing pass from Jack Johnson to Ian Dursey for a 31-yard pickup to bring Allegheny into enemy territory. The number one play of the week. Gage Deusler strikes again. For this play, we got another personal season best rushing attempt for 63 yards and the touchdown for Deusler. This rounds out his day with two touchdowns and 130 yards. Amazing plays, and I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to stay tuned for next week, same time, same place, as we go through the next top five plays of the week. I'm Ethan Spazarski signing off. 
we'll see you next time. Coming up in a moment, we'll have that sit-down interview. Austin Bechtold with Ethan Dallum from USC Upper St. Clair coming up just moments away. You're watching a presentation of PAC Football. I'm Austin Bechtel, joined alongside Case Western junior wide receiver Ethan Dahlum. Ethan, tell me about your journey through football, how you started playing, and why you fell in love with the game. Uh, I wasn't allowed to play football until fourth grade, so I always had the passion watching my uncle and my dad play. There's nothing like playing on Saturdays now and Friday Night Lights, just playing with your teammates and just having a good time, especially the team bonding experience um, after games, getting food. It's such a blast. And, um, football is the ultimate team sport, like they said in the meetings back there, and there's nothing I would give up for it. And football is all in the family for you as well, growing up in Upper St. Clair, playing with your brother. What is it like going through those experiences? It's pretty good. Uh, I wish I played with him in high school, but he's four years younger, so just watching him and just trying to mentor him right now. Um, he's getting better each and every day. How has your relationship with the game of football changed from when you were younger to now? I think I appreciate it more. Um, most of the time when I'm younger, yeah, you're just goofing around having fun with friends and games, but I appreciate it more now growing up and um, being in college now at the D3 level, obviously, like there's like very rare chance you even go to the NFL, so now you just appreciate every time you step on the field, like this could be my last game. So you just go um, enjoy it, have fun with your teammates, and just ball out. What's one of the best parts about playing wide receiver? The best part is playing wide receiver. Uh, going to make plays and just um, doing things that I didn't do in high school, which obviously I played quarterback in high school, but like receiver, you are more dependent on the quarterback. So it's really up to you to get open and do your job before uh, the quarterback makes his read. So um, it's a lot of new intricacies that are different, but once you make a play, um, it's one of the best feelings in the world and it really gets the team hype. How do you feel playing quarterback previously helped you in your transition to wide receiver? It's a lot easier. Like quarterback, you're reading coverages all the time, and you're just trying to figure out what the defense is scheming up, and that's what I did in high school. But now, playing receiver, you can, as you're on the field, you can look at what they're in, and then you can know leverages, schemes, stems you try to run. And it's a really good feeling to know what you're in. And like last year, having a good quarterback is Drew. You can communicate right before the play starts. but. This year, with new quarterbacks, uh, we have to develop that chemistry and say, like, this is what they're in, we should do this. So it's a lot easier playing. You also grew up playing basketball. How did other sports help you in playing football, and what did you learn from them that assists you on the field? In any level, especially in high school and, like, little kids, I think you should play mul multiple sports. You should never specialize in one sport. So basketball has really helped me um, cut and move, and that's how I develop as a receiver, just all the basketball moves. Just It's like playing basketball, just crossing over all the receiver moves. So it's really helped me so far, and it's amazing that I was able to play two sports. We're talking to Ethan Dahlm of Case Western Reserve. What's been one of your favorite memories wearing a Spartan uniform? I think my favorite memory so far was either uh, Geneva my freshman year or uh, W&J this past year. W&J, um, I dropped a punt uh, the drive before, and then the next time we got it, I ended up catching the game winning touchdown. So it's all about overcoming adversity. And it's the same thing in the Geneva game. Um, I didn't get the ball as much, but at the end, I had uh, four catches on the last drive for the game winning drive. So it's all about, um, it's a momentum game, and you always have to keep your head up. Finally, what's one message that you'd like to give your family, friends, and support staff throughout the years? Thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you to God foremost, and then thank you to my parents. Thank you for everything you've done for me and everything I do is to mentor Jules and my little sister Carter and everything they do um, and just trying to be the best young man I can be and growing up going forward. Ethan, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ethan Dahlen representing Case Western Reserve Football. 24-14 Washington and Jefferson over Case Western Reserve. Washington and Jefferson looking great on all three phases of football tonight. Offense, defense, and especially that block punt for a touchdown on special teams. We'll get a complete recap of first half highlights when we get back with Austin. And it's all coming up next on KDK+. We've continually invested in the best resources and advanced dental technology to ensure gentle and more efficient treatment for all of our patients. It's very gratifying for me to live in the community where we practice. 
At our practice, we specialize in sedation dentistry, dental implants, and general dentistry. We take excellent care of our patients so that they're comfortable each time they come visit us. Families have been coming to DeBartolo Dental through the years. Our patients' kids and grandkids are now also our patients. Good job, excellent job, okay? That was tough competition, but it was good competition. It shows you what we need to work on. You can't give up, okay? And you never have. You've never made excuses. So we just get back in, we get in the trenches, we play two games tomorrow, and then we see what we end up with. Got it? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, two. Maya, can you come in here, please? Hey, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't go tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and event space for your next event. For more information, visit voodoobrewery.com. Your first alert weather. A marginal threat for some strong to severe thunderstorms popping tomorrow. Wherever, whenever. CBS News Pittsburgh. We're going to see some rain, some thunderstorms developing for parts of this weekend. On the free CBS News app and Pluto TV. What happens when you put students first? At Pittsburgh Public Schools, you get exceptional learning experiences. In 54 schools, including one online academy, in 85 early childhood classrooms, 20 magnet schools, and 16 career and technical education programs. More options, more opportunities, more ways we put every one of our 20,000 students first. Always in all ways. And we're back at halftime. Case Western Reserve is trailing Washington and Jefferson 24-14. I had the opportunity to talk to Coach Sirianni right before half. And what he was saying was he's happy with his team's overall performance. However, there are some things he's a little concerned about. He thought he left some opportunities on the field with a couple of quick three and outs resulting in punts. He wasn't happy about the two drives where Case Western Reserve was able to get touchdowns. But to be up 24-14... It's one of those deals where you take what you can get. Believing, though, they're still within a couple of scores and there's still a second half of football to play, and it's a big second half for them. Austin? Yeah, th thank you, Mangino. And overall, it was just a solid performance from WJ on both sides of the ball. You know, the offense has talked about so much, and we mentioned that, but WJ defensively stand up, answer the bell, and looked really how Case Western has played all year. For sure. Uh, we came in thinking that it would be kind of the opposite we, we thought that it would be the case western defense that would be stifling w and j's offense at every turn the first 10 minutes of this game w and j went up and down the field twice they put the ball in the end zone twice uh they were up 14 points uh before case western really got anything going offensively now on the case western side of things a few positives to look at they did have a very uh impressive drive right before the half they got into the end zone uh and now they were they will get the football to begin this second half, Austin, and that can prove to be a pretty big difference because they can pull off uh, what I like to call the double dip. If they can go into the end zone to start this second half, we're right back to a three-point game. Jake Pugh got the scoring going with a four-yard touchdown run. That was capped by a Ricky Hunter extra point. It was a seven-play drive, seven plays for 79 total yards. John Paduzzi from Jake Pugh from five yards out scored. It was also a Volpatti interception that helped to set it up. Noah Coyne, though, was able to find the end zone first of two trips for Case Western. He's been a big play receiver for the Spartans all year long, and 
Corn was able to score from six yards out from Frogberg. That made it 14 to seven. Well, it's just been strong from Washington and Jefferson starting off the game. And then how about the block by Zakai Simmons? Kobe DeRosa picked it up five yards out for the score and the last score before the break. Noah Coyne, 23 yards out from Fromberg. Overall stats, total yards, pretty even. The turnovers on Washington and Jefferson's side, but have not been too costly. Overall, those two turnovers that were forced by Washington and Jefferson against Case Western. Those have been ones that, you know, WJ has done a decent job of trying to take advantage of. Jake Pugh, 9 of 14 on the game. Alex Fromberg, 10 of 18, two touchdowns and a pick. Yeah, and on the Case Western side, somebody that you have to to highlight, and I know you mentioned his name, but Noah Coyne, uh, a really good first half. Just four receptions, but two of them going for touchdowns. And both of the touchdown grabs, he made it look easier than it probably should have. Uh, one was just sort of a, a post across the middle, across the back of the end zone. Uh, the second one, he had to go up and high point a little bit, uh, a, a back shoulder throw, but he... Uh, gets into the end zone twice. He also had the 49-yard catch and run across the middle that sparked the first touchdown drive for Case Western. So the Spartans by no means out of this game. They made things interesting by getting into the end zone before halftime. And now we are in for what could be a pretty exciting finish to this one here. Two teams that are stacked on top of each other, Austin, in the President's Athletic Conference. Now, yeah, the, the, the sights of the... PAC title pretty much out of the question because Grove City has just not lost this season. They have the tiebreaker on everybody, but still some some positioning to be had in the PAC in these final few weeks. A two-score lead for w and is what began it. Hugh Peduzzi being able to get the presidents on the board, and Coyne has been the one that had the biggest response alongside Alex Fromberg for Case Western. The second half is next for Cameron Stadium. At Two Men and a Truck, we'll treat you and your belongings like we'd treat our own grandmas. Here we go! Hi there. Hello there. Welcome. Whether we're moving you across town or even across the country. You want top quality roofing? Replacing a roof isn't just shingles. It's a complete engineered system. Being Pittsburgh's number one platinum preferred roofing replacement company, we offer free estimates from one of the most trusted and well-trained teams in the industry. With over 40 years in the business, JP Roofing is efficient and complete most roofing jobs in just one day. If you're looking to get your roof replaced, hire JP Roofing and Siding. Quality long remembered at a fair price. What keeps you moving? Is it your grandkids learning to ride a bike or Fido wanting to go for walks? At Washington Health System Center for Orthopedic Excellence, our highly trained team offers a wide variety of services from sports medicine, general orthopedics, arm, elbow, and wrist care to arthroscopic surgery, fracture care of foot and ankles, same day joint replacements, and minimally invasive surgery all tailored to your specific needs. Discover the difference at WHS. We don't just treat your symptoms, we empower you to live your best life free from pain and limitations. Don't let pain or injury stop you any longer. Choose Washington Health System for your orthopedic care and take your first steps towards recovery and a healthier, more active life. Call us or visit our website to schedule your appointment today. You now get more local news on KDKA+. Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 1230 on KDKA+. Plus. Welcome back to Washington, Pennsylvania. High above Cameron Stadium. We begin the second half of play. 10-point lead for W&J. 24-14 in the Case Western Reserve Spartans. We'll get the ball to begin the third quarter of play. Jackson Brinton on will kick it away at the 35. We'll see what the Spartans can do with it as it goes into the end zone and will be returned. The 10, 15, and to the near side. Good tackle made on Yoder, made by the Presidents before reaching the 20 yard line. Let's send it down to Robert Mangino on the sideline. Austin, thank you very much. Had the opportunity to speak to Coach Tobolik, and he said that first half, 
they took some time to get settled down and compose themselves. That block punt for a touchdown, obviously huge. And what to expect in the second half? A lot more throwing through the air. For, expect a lot of four wide receiver sets and a lot of passing from it. And if their passing is covered, they expect runs up the middle. All right, Mangino, thank you. 170 yards passing from Alex Bromberg so far in this game as he lines up in the shotgun and hands it off. Dussler on the carry. Able to power his way forward for about five yards. A positive pickup. And I also think for Case Western, try to establish the running game as well. Don't abandon it. Yeah, you don't necessarily always just have to pass the football just because it is a three or four wide receiver set. You have guys that are capable of running the football on this squad, including your quarterback. You have a guy that is almost a, a dual threat type back there. Bromberg fakes the handoff, looks middle of the field, deflected up into the air and intercepted. Now being ruled incomplete. Wow, could have been a highlight reel play for Zakai Simmons, but just not able to hold on to the ground. Yeah, that, that was the uh, did not survive the ground rule. As Simmons went up there, it did look like a highlight reel effort. We'll see on the replay here. But as he comes down to the ground, you're going to see him not have full control. Yeah, and he loses yeah, it, lost it before he even hits the ground. Brings up third down and five. Ball to 23. Two receivers line up each side for Fromberg. With time, Fromberg steps up, has room to run, elects to take off. Fromberg at the 30, makes a man miss. Is able to pick up the first down. Good job to be able to slip past the tackle of Keaton Hall to move the chains. Yeah, that's the type of thing you want to see Fromberg do. If things do break down in front of him and in the pocket, and you only have a, a few yards to get to move those chains, especially on a third down, you want to see a guy that can move pretty well back there, use his legs to get the first. Ball at the 32, pistol formation for Fromberg. Now sends Dussler out to his left. Romberg looking to take a shot deep down the field for Coyne. He's got it at the 35, 30. Coyne makes the man miss, still going at the 20. Simmons trying to bring him down, and Coyne is finally wrestled to the ground at the 18-yard line. Noah Coyne using his 6-4 frame to make a huge play and set up first down in the red zone. And if Case Western can come back and win this game, Noah Coyne has himself uh, in the argument of player of the game. You see him tiptoe the sideline there after the corner route. He's able to, to beat the defender. Another huge play for Noah Coyne to go along with the near 50-yard grab in the first half and the two touchdowns. Ball at the 18-yard line. Dussler is the back to hand it off his way. Dussler up the middle. Powers his way forward to the 11-yard line. A solid pickup of about seven yards. Case Western just quickly striking down the field. Yeah, whenever things like this happen, you'll see the confidence build on the offensive side of the ball. And we have noticed more and more confidence on this offense, really dating back to that last drive right before the half. Coins lines up near side of the field, isolated one-on-one -on -one at the 10. They hand it off to Dussler. Dussler gets close to the eight where he needed to pick up a first down. No signal yet if it will be first and goal, but Looks to be the case. Maybe just a little bit short. Third and about the length of the football coming up. I would just run a sneak here. Third and that short. Fomberg lines up under center. Will sneak it and picks up the first. So first and goal coming up for Case Western about the six, six and a half yard line. And we're seeing a good balance on this drive. We know that they have run more of that spread type offense, but as you said, your early point, they have not abandoned that run game. They've had Dussler involved on this drive as it's gone down the field. Dussler is the back in the pistol behind Fromberg. Take the handoff his way. Fromberg looking towards Coyne's direction, incomplete. Carson Laconi had the coverage. And Coyne was just trying to keep his feet in bounds right near the pylon, but not able to corral it. Yeah, Coyne wanted a flag. We'll see if the replay tells us he was right. There was some contact around there. Hard to tell if anything was egregious. Just a well-defended play. 
Brings up second down and goal to seven. One-on-one -on -one coverage with Coyne. Doesn't look like there's any safety help that way. And they're looking to target Coyne. Coyne in the end zone, incomplete. And once again, Carson Laconi was up for the task. And it's smart if you're going to go with the end zone fade that Coyne is the guy you go to. Uh, we've preached about his size time and time again. 6'4", 205, he's the biggest target out on the field. That has to be the guy that you have your, your eyes on if you're Case Western. Unfortunately, W and J is smart enough to probably expect that. Well, it's a decent amount of contact there as well. Third and goal at the seven. Fromberg looking towards the end zone, open man, touchdown. Ethan Dahlum scores and cuts it to a one possession game. And it was a great route by Dahlum. Just gave a little shimmy shake move to his defender, but credit the touch that Alex Fromberg puts on that pass. You can't put too much on it or else it takes your receiver out of the back of the end zone. Once he saw him break open there and he had some space to work with, just lobbed it up in the back of the end zone. We got a ball game here. First touchdown of the year for Ethan Dahlum, extra point to cut it to three. No good. It's a very low kick. Didn't look like the snap was very good. Looks like a low snap and Michael Stewie was not able to time out. Hold it there for the kick from Petrosi. So it's a four point game, 24 to 20. We'll be back right after this, 11.30 to go in the third quarter. This Saturday, tune into KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Washington and Jefferson Presidents face the Geneva Golden Tornadoes. This Saturday at 1 p.m. only on KDKA Plus. When you step through that door or shake their hands, will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready, ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready? Why call two men in a truck? If you're like Kate, you're moving and you work hard. You've got lots of stuff and no time to move it. You need pros, people who care about it as much as you do. That's why you call two men in a truck. Two men in a truck. It's a four-point game at Cameron Stadium. Case Western did indeed double up W and J going into the break, coming out of that. The Presidents will get the football. Muff right away, but picked up. Past the 10, got to hold on to the football as well for the Presidents. Just to make it to about the 17-yard line. Cam Mulvaney, who not seen him return a lot of kicks this season, but has been the featured guy today. 13 unanswered points for Case Western. That has them right back in this ball game. Unfortunately, the missed PAT after the last touchdown still makes it a situation where you need a touchdown to uh, take the lead. You can't just kick a field goal to tie the game, but a more energized sideline on that far side of the field as the Spartans have battled back into this one. Indeed, first down and 10 at the 18. Zach Cernudo goes in motion towards the near side. Pugh hands it off. Little Patty trying to establish the edge, but not able to get much, maybe a yard Possibly two. There's not too much running room there. As it was Kobe DeRosa, rather, my apologies, on the rush. And only got a couple. Yeah, Sean Torres was able to track him down. He has good speed from that inside linebacker position. Not a big guy, but 5'11", 220, able to go sideline to sideline there pretty quickly and really make it a... I don't know, maybe a half yard gain. Quick pass to McCosco, blocking, not necessarily there, but McCosco able to make it to the 26 before AJ Dadowski makes the stop. Third and short coming up. 
And Dudowski coming from the defensive end position, he able to, he's able to shed his block and get his arms around the ball carrier. Big third down situation here early in this third quarter. I know you can say they're all pretty big. The presidents are just trying to get the right personnel on the field. Running Raymond Holmes and Zach Cernudo off late. Seven seconds on the play clock and W and J has to use a timeout. Timeout, W and J. It's their first time out of the half. And that could be a huge timeout used on third and two coming up very early on in the second half. Yeah, this is the, the type of timeout that uh, no head coach is going to be happy with because it's early in the second half and often the timeout comes up because of just miscommunication or poor time management. So uh, either one could have been at play there. As you noted, the, the play clock was running down. But this is a case where the coaches are going to be frustrated by it. The players are going to be frustrated by it. And now you have to keep in mind the presidents now with one fewer timeout in a game that you could need them uh, as we get down to the final minutes. Yeah, you never know when you might need them in the fourth quarter. As DeRosa remains the back in the shotgun with Pew. Two receivers to the far side, one on the near side. Tight end on the far side of the formation as well. Pew on the option will pitch it to DeRosa. DeRosa gets the first down and spins his way to the 32. So it works out for the presidents. Timeout does not go to waste. Move the chains to the 32 yard line. Yeah, I like that design and execution there. Just a pure old fashioned option play. You get enough to move the change. You don't need anything fancy there. You have the most prolific passing attack in the PAC, but on third and short, you just want to keep the football in your possession. Ball on the far side hash. W and J moving right to left. Case Western shows pressure and brings it. Two passes deflected at the line. Incomplete. It was that blitz right off the, the rush, off the left side of the formation. Jake Summers was outside linebacker spot. The one that got his hand up there. Jake Summers, one of the grad students on this defense. And what is a somewhat veteran crew, the six foot, 200 pounder. Another guy from Avon Lake, Ohio. Three and a half tackles for loss this year. He has a sack, also has an interception. And you see examples right there of why that might be a great play off the edge. Second down. Pugh looking to try to set up screen. To Volpatti. Nothing there. Troy Volpatti had no shot as Henry Bush brought him down behind the line of scrimmage. Lost back to the 31. Yeah, and it's a great rep from Henry Bush. You're going to see on the replay. They developed the screen out well. So the entire offensive line, you're trying to build that convoy. But shedding the block is what he Henry Bush does, and that blows up the entire play for W and J. Now it's third down behind the sticks. And your defense, if you're Case Western, trying to get you the football back. That's Bush's eighth tackle for loss this year, a defense that came in with 45 total tackles for loss, 17 sacks, eight interceptions, just over seven points per game. WJ has put up 24. We're going to try to keep the drive alive on third and 11. Pugh steps up, delivers, passes, caught. Reception made by Nick Wilson. Wilson, who has not been featured very prominently in this offense, He's able to keep it alive to the 46. That's the sign of a veteran quarterback, somebody that's not worried about putting trust into just his favorite targets out on the field. Wilson, a name that we have not mentioned, and the 6'1 sophomore on a third down and 10-plus found himself open down the field, and Pugh hits him. Pugh hands it off. Owen oh, Patricic stays on his feet. Bounces it far side and is upended at midfield. Strong tackle made by Chukwucha at his cornerback spot for Wilmington, Delaware. And a pickup of four. Nate Sakalo came up from the safety spot. He had a chance to finish off this play early, uh, but he was one of two players that had their tackle shed. And some extra yardage gained by Patricic on that run. So ball right at midfield on the far side, Hash. W and J mentioned it a little bit earlier, but really slowing down the pace, not going 
too much up tempo as Pugh snaps the ball with four seconds left on the clock. In and out of the hands of Zach Seaman, not able to make the reception. Two wide receivers were there for WJ. John Paduzzi as well. It brings up third and about six. Nearly a dangerous situation there for Jake Pugh. Almost a tip drill for that Case Western defense, but nonetheless, it falls incomplete and another third down, but the presidents have been game in these situations so far on this drive. Yeah, tips and overthrows, two things that the defense looks to try to capitalize on, not able to do so there, but able to force the incompletion. Third down with Pugh in the shotgun. Costco, the wide receiver to the near side with Rosati. Paduzzi to the far side. Pugh steps up, throws, lost it up for Paduzzi, and he makes the catch. What a play from Jake Pugh to escape. Find John Paduzzi. Seems like the ball hung up there forever, and Paduzzi made the grab. Yeah, that's a huge effort on both ends. Pocket collapsing. Pugh steps up last minute. He makes the throw as he's going down. You see it's a wounded duck out there, but Paduzzi, credit to him to come down with it and hold on to it. And a flag is thrown from the W&J side of the field. As Coach Sirianni is about more than a quarter of the way onto the field. Yeah, he's out by the numbers. I wonder if there was something that w &J was looking at in terms of a substitution issue the referees might have found us. Sirianni will get an explanation. There's still no signal yet as to what this might be. Jake Pugh looking for an explanation and we'll get one now. Illegal substitution. It's five yard penalty, first down. So it was a substitution foul that was called on W and J. And it'll back the ball up just past the 30. So a lot of confusion there from W and J as to what the call was. Sirianni not happy with it. First and 15 for Pew, empty backfield. Three receivers near side to the far side. Pew, quick pass, it's caught. And knee down for Zach Seaman on the reception at the 29. They yeah, basically get back to the initial line of scrimmage on that first down throw and a quick throw. You saw somebody coming off the edge pretty much unblocked. And I'm impressed. We've seen a, a pass here and there tonight, one of them earlier this drive. Jake Pew, we talked about it pregame, Austin. Not a, not a big guy, 5'11". Right. Uh, which is very undersized as a quarterback. Very few passes of his get tipped. You would think a guy his size and a lot more. I mean, we, we see the Case Western defense get up. Somehow he avoids passes getting tipped down the field. Pew with time, delivers downfield, incomplete. Broken up, looking for McCosco. McCosco wanted a flag, does not get it. Strong coverage from Dominic Size. Yeah, Fourth we'll completion now third down. See the replay here, the pass to the left side. Size played that pretty perfectly. It was a bang-bang play. Contact did not happen until that ball was there. That was a good point, though, about Pew. And you know, off the off the edge there, Pew knowing that he had to get it away. Just a couple plays earlier on the first down and 15 play. Third and 11. Pugh rolls near side, downfield, one-on-one coverage from Acosco. Incomplete, and size once again was there to force the incomplete pass. They, and, and now for w &J, you're really in no man's land. Yeah, so you're likely going to keep the offense out on the field unless you have a lot of confidence in your, your kicker. But again, size in the, in coverage. And he's the guy that leads the PAC in interceptions. Now, th those few passes of him uh, against him in coverage. He has not been in the position to pick the ball off, but he can still play a factor as we saw in these last two plays. But here we go, a fourth and 10, this WNJ offense out on the field. Ball at the 29 for Pew. Empty backfield in the shotgun with time. Pew steps up, delivers, middle of the field, it's caught. Nick Wilson on the reception. 
inside the 10 yard line. Wilson's come up huge on this drive. And again, going back to the point made a handful of plays ago, Wilson was the recipient on a huge third down play. Almost the same pattern too. It's just a post across the middle. Wilson coming from the slot position and another huge throw and catch. And that, that says a lot about Jake Pugh to put the, the trust into Nick Wilson, who is certainly not his top one or two targets. Wilson, a 6'1 sophomore from Salem, Ohio, as Pugh keeps it. Walks towards the end zone, open man, touchdown, Jacob McCosco. Across the middle as Jake Pugh delivers a strike from nine yards out. It's been a quiet night for McCosco, but that polishes off what might have been, at least to me, the most impressive drive of the night for WJ. There was a lot of adversity that the presidents had to face, and it, they had the football for a long time because Case Western went down the field pretty quickly to open up this second half. Uh, a nice long drive for WJ. They face several third downs. They end up with seven more points, and they can extend that lead now back to two scores. Ricky Hunter's extra point up and good, 31 to 20. 5.14 to go in the third quarter of play. Case Western gets the ball next, trailing by 11. We believe that fear shouldn't stop you from having healthy teeth. Don't fear the dentist. Sedation is a safe option for you to be comfortable during your entire appointment. Call D. Bartola Dental to schedule your visit now at 412-221-9440. Here at Loway, we have a pretty vast array of customizable promotional products from pens, signs, mugs, water bottles, really anything you can think of. Some of the main services we provide here are screen printing, embroidery, and promotional products. What really sets us apart from our competitors is our on-staff design crew and our customer service. We can really help take your branding and marketing to a new level. The main thing you can expect from us here at Loway is quick turnaround times and a really high quality product. Tune into KDKA Plus for D3 college football as the Washington and Jefferson presidents face the Geneva Golden Tornadoes. This Saturday at 1 p.m. only on KDKA Plus. Great shot of Washington, Pennsylvania from our drone operator, Corey Berger. Prime time action at W&J. Stadium all lit up here in late October. Returned out to the 25, 30, and spinning down near the 30-yard line. So, okay, here we go. Case Western will get the ball again after WNJ was able to score 57 degrees here at Cameron Stadium. A little bit of wind, but pretty much a good day in Western Pennsylvania. There's been on and off again rain. Really nothing too substantial, though. First down and 10 at the 31. Lots of time. Pass is caught. And a first down for Riley Nurick. It took a while for Fromberg to be able to connect with Nurick. This time, though, able to pick up close to a first down. About eight, nine yards on the reception. Yeah, the 5'8 senior hasn't been able to have quite the impact he may have wanted coming into this game, but he can certainly still play a part. His team down by 11. 10 plus minutes into this third quarter, trying to mount a comeback. It was at one point a 17 point deficit. Pass complete for a first down to the far side of the field. And once again, there's Nurek on the catch. Two straight receptions. Just easy pitch and catch, sort of a swing pass, screen pass to the outside just to get enough to move the chain. So first down already moving up near midfield. Ball at the 45. Fromberg now looks over to the sideline. Ball's on the far side hash. Case Western moving left to right. 
Austin Bechtel, Donnie Chedrick, Robert Mangino down on the sideline here from Cameron Stadium, President's Athletic Conference action right here on KDKA+. Plus. Deuce over the back. They fake it his way. Swing it out to the far side, and definitely a point of emphasis on this drive to get Nurek involved. Third consecutive reception for Nurek, and again, a nice chunk on first down. Now you get second and short. That really opens up the playbook, too to pretty much anything. Second down and short, you can do almost anything at your disposal. So we'll see what Case Western goes with here. But basically, you can just run your basic dive plays or you can take a shot at the end zone. He was able to gain nine in the WJ territory. And off goes the Deucer. Deucer was running him up the middle past the 40. He's able to fall forward to the 37. Another first down. Yeah, we're going to see him have some room going up the middle here as this replay hits. So again, moving the sticks, there's really been a different look, a different confidence, a different swagger in this Case Western offense since late in that first half. They had the touchdown drive before halftime. They opened up the second half with a touchdown drive. They're moving at a pretty good clip here again. Pass far side of the field is incomplete. Wykowski the intended target. So it brings up second down, but you know, overall, when you think about it, Case Western and W and J, you think about W and J's offense. Defensively, they play really well. Case Western offensively, it was not a decent job. You're probably just a little bit surprised about the Spartans have played defensively in this one. Yeah, it hasn't been uh, the, the game that we expected coming in. You could say that. Uh, not a game where we thought the Case Western offense was going to look much stronger uh, against this W&J defense and sort of vice versa, how the W&J offense has looked against the Case Western defense. Bromberg's jump pass goes incomplete for Dahlum. And it sets up third down. Two incompletions forced by W&J defensively. Justin Johns collapsed in on him. Johns a good coverage linebacker. Also known to bring the blitz a decent amount, too. See if Gabe Lavara dials up some pressure. John's showing pressure and backs off. Fromberg being chased by Keaton Hall. Fromberg goes down. Keaton Hall gets home at midfield, brings down Alex Fromberg and forces fourth down. Defenders coming from both directions. And unfortunately, Fromberg stopped, and he took a big-time hit from his blind side, and now that puts Case Western way behind the sticks. They have no other choice but to bring out the punter. Lucky to hold on to the football as well. Romberg seemingly bobbled the ball as Hall brought him to the ground, but was able to hold on. It's fourth and 22 after the sack. W and J bringing pressure from the interior of the line. Not able to block this one as fair catch is called for by Rosati at the 15. Well, it's been a great season calling college games right here on KDKA Plus, and we're nearing our conclusion. Only a couple games left, including next week, Washington and Jefferson is at Geneva. We begin the month of November, November 4th at 1 o'clock next Saturday right here on KDKA Plus. The Geneva Golden Tornadoes against the Presidents. First down for W and J. Ball placed at the 16 yard line. Pugh hands it off. Gain of just a couple yards for Kobe DeRosa. He's been a main feature guy in this offense. Somebody who's typically been the third running back behind Huss and Volpatti. Seen a lot of DeRosa today. Yeah, the presidents have a few options. We touched on that a little bit in the first half, a, a few different options they can go to in the backfield. If we see a similar drive to what W&J did uh, just a few minutes ago, they could be in position to kind of put this game on ice because we're already down to our final 90 seconds of the third quarter. Pew, this time might have been deflected at the line. I think that was the case. As Jake Summers got his hand up, that is outside linebacker spot. And there's a player down for W and J. A little bit slow to get up. Timeout. Officials timeout for injury. That's Dante Loma. Who limps off the field. 
Oklahoma has played some right tackle this season. He's able to walk off under his own power. So, one, one thirty-two to go here in the quarter. Thirty-one to twenty is the score. Washington and Jefferson out in front of Case Western. And W and J just looking to try to not go three and out here. A lot of football still to be played. Pew as a flag is thrown right at the snap. Delivers downfield from Acosco. Catch is made at the 36. Acosco makes the reception. We got to check the marker on the far side of the field. W and J signaling that it's against Case Western. That's Offside, defense number 10. Penalties declined, result of the play, first down. Gaden Tong guilty of the offsides call. So it is a first down, good to make it to the 35 on the reception from Acosco. So Zach Cernudo comes off the field. Pew lines up, the ball at the near side hash towards us in the pistol with the rose at the back. Fake the handoff and Pew looks downfield, incomplete. Trying to connect with Zach Seaman. It would have put the ball into Case Western territory with exactly 60 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second and 10 upcoming from the 35. And overall with Aaron Kreps as the play caller Mike Sirianni giving up play calling duties this week for the first time in over 20 years. Yeah, and the W&J offense really hasn't missed a beat. Pew looking near side, trying to take a shot for McCosco. Juggled and incomplete. McCosco tried to tip it to himself as it was just a little bit overthrown by Jake Pew. And incompletion brings up third down. Now you're gonna want to get the opposing offense off the field on any third down situation. But I feel like this one is more meaningful than most. Under a minute to go in this third quarter, down by 11 points, third down and 10. We just saw a drive that featured several third and even a fourth down conversion from the presidents offensively. You want to get some confidence back on that defensive side of the football and get your offense back in a position to put up points. Big rush on Jake Pugh. He escapes, throw middle of the field, incomplete, but definitely a flag coming in on Nick Wilson. Wilson was held, and it looked pretty evident. We'll take another look. And Nick Wilson has been a he's turned into defense number 15. Be a 15-yard penalty. First down. That was Sakalo in coverage. Nick, Guilty of the penalty. Nick Wilson has turned into a game-changing player in these last five or so player, minutes number 16, of game time. Number 16. He had multiple third down and even that fourth down reception on that last drive. And right there on a third and ten, he's the guy down the middle Huge. who gets himself open, and the defender has no other choice but to interfere. It was Nate. Sakalo, a junior, 5'11", safety on the penalty. Handoff goes up the middle. A couple yards for Volpatti, a little bit extra at the end of it there. The Case Western sideline was pretty adamant as Adam Kazera kind of put his hands up to the side and kind of tried to say, I didn't do anything wrong as there's a Case Western player down. Timeout. Official's timeout, injury. 29 seconds still to go in the quarter. As let's send it down to Robert Mangino with more. Thank you very much, Austin. Couple of things. One, from my perspective on that penalty, it was a whole lot more like a basketball penalty than it was a legitimate one. But what is interesting to note from Sirianni in this game is that he is working the referees on this sideline. He's been doing so all game long. And we were talking earlier about how 
he's not calling the plays offensively and that he was focusing more on the defensive side of the ball. And I think considering what they've been able to accomplish against West, Case Western Reserve so far, it's been evident. Yeah, it really has. And we, we know how good this offense can be when it's clicking on all cylinders. A couple penalties have helped as well. As that was Sean Torres who makes his way to the sideline. So Torres will be attended to, is able to walk off under his own power, and WJ does not need to run another play to end this quarter, and the Presidents will content not to do so. 31-20 to 20 is our score. Put up those fours. Let's go to the fourth quarter. Reset the clock. One more quarter of action coming up. W and J, Halloween weekend, looking to pull out a victory. You can now get more local news on KDKA Plus. More breaking news. Residents are being asked to stay outside of their house. More community stories. More weather. A couple of funnel clouds were spotted. Weekdays at 1230 on KDKA Plus. When you step through that door, or shake their hands. Will you be prepared? When you stand up for a client or walk into that meeting, will you be ready? Ready to prove to them that you deserve to be there? When you come to Washington and Jefferson, you will be. Washington and Jefferson College. Are you ready? Allison and Michael have been in their home for 10 years, and their bathroom really needed an update. I like doing home projects. Would have definitely taken me longer than we have. They needed a more convenient option, so they called West Shore. The design consultant made it really easy. I left for work with the kids, and they showed up. Morning. Have a nice day at school. By dinner time, we had our bathroom. This Saturday, tune in to KDKA Plus for D3 College Football as the Washington and Jefferson Presidents face the Geneva Golden Tornadoes. This Saturday at 1 p.m. only on KDKA Plus. Oh, yeah. What uh, what Halloween costume do you think that is, Donnie? That, to me, actually looks like the... Uh, you know they made a horror movie out of the Winnie the Pooh Yes, they story. did, which was... Something that's, they shouldn't have done. That's actually what that looked like to me. Pew, we're going to take a shot deep down the field for McCosco. Caught! Touchdown! Jacob McCosco from JQ, 53 yards. What a grab from the Peters Township grad. I don't want to call that a dagger just yet, but first play of the fourth quarter, that's how you set a tone to open up the final 15 for W and J, and that touchdown now puts them up by three scores. What a throw from Pew to McCosco, and you could kind of tell as soon as that ball was up there and wasn't sure if McCosco grabbed it, if it was intercepted, the entire building just kind of went silent for a second, and McCosco was able to grab it. A huge, huge touchdown from 53 yards to put the president's 38 points on the board, far exceeding the most that Case Western has given up this year to any team. Yeah, and it looked like for a second there, we would almost get an interception. It was Sonny Otto that was back in coverage, the corner. But McCosco, McCosco comes up with it on the pass from Pew. Certainly an exclamation point you could put on this one, W and J against this Case Western defense. They've made a statement through the first 45 minutes and nine seconds. A statement indeed, and you know, you really wondered how Washington and Jefferson was going to respond after the loss to Carnegie Mellon last week. Just a crushing, crushing blow to the season overall, where a bowl game is still in play this year. But the chance of the PAC title gone, the NCAA playoffs likely gone, 
W and J has just done a terrific job on all cylinders. Well, they, and they hadn't really looked like the same team since that loss about a month ago to Grove City. They lose to Grove City, uh, then a, a tough one uh, against Allegheny where they couldn't put them away, and then the loss last week uh, to CMU. But they have bounced back here in a big way. They're holding an 18-point lead in the final quarter. Lopez on the run back. Very strong kick return of the 42. So if you're Case Western right now, trailing by 18 points, just try to take it one play at a time. Don't try to get it back all on one or two plays. But knowing that the clock is definitely not in your favor, a lot of work to do. Bromberg's pass over the middle. It's caught by Dahlum into w &J territory at the 40. Ethan Dahlum had a knee injury that he took into this year that you know, really limited him early on in camp and early this season. When you see the, the brace on the right knee, but he has made multiple plays tonight in that slot. Ball to the airside hash. Case Western moving right to left. Dusler on the ground. Makes his way to about the 37 for a three-yard pickup. I've not been able to see much of Gage Dusler today, mostly because Case Western has been playing from behind. Yeah, Dusler has still been able to find some nice carries, but yeah, I mean, he's certainly not the, the featured part of this offense because uh, we're at the point in the game now where Alex Fromberg is going to have to start to put, put the football in the air a lot more. He's already had a, a pretty good night from that end of things, but he needs to do it uh, probably every two of three plays. Fromberg throws it to Dahlum, and Dahlum's going to look to throw. Deep downfield, a man is wide open. Caught, coin, touchdown. Case Western. Ethan Dahlum to Noah Coin for six. Pull that one out of the bag of tricks. Ah, a little razzle-dazzle, a little shake and bake from the Case Western offense. A much-needed time for that. Perfectly executed. And Dahlum put this one pretty much right on the money. Coin had to slow down just a little bit, but he had... The defenders beat so badly, uh, it didn't matter. Third touchdown of the night for Noah Coyne. He has been a real difference maker in this one. Without him, who knows where we're at. Case Western will go for two. Fromberg in the pistol. Now the shotgun as Dusler moves to his left. Fromberg looking middle of the field, incomplete. Two point try, no good. 38. 26. Ball point game with 13.31 to go in the fourth. Maya, can you come in here, please? Yeah, Dad, what's up? Is, is that your brother on the TV? Yeah, that's my brother. It looks like it's tonight's game. But how can that be your brother? I have never missed a single game. We couldn't do it tonight. Remember, you broke your foot. Right. Well, I don't know who's putting on this production, but without them, I'd be missing this. Two men and a truck will treat you and your belongings like we'd treat our own grandmas. Here we go! Hi there. Hello there. Welcome. Whether we're moving you across town or even across the country. So there's been a lot of offense in this game here today. Something that we necessarily didn't expect, but hey, we'll take it. WJ will get the football 
And yeah, those President's fans are pretty happy with what they're seeing right now. Taken past the 20, 25, and brought down at about the 26, 27 yard line. WJ has been clicking offensively against the number one defense in the conference, number six in the country. And to steal a Mike Tomlin term, WJ has made this varsity level <laughs> defense for Case Western look somewhat JV. Yeah, they, uh, I guess you could say they haven't blinked, right? They they cut their eyelids off. That'd be another one. Something to also note, uh, this being a 12-point game, not as simple uh, as just a touchdown, two-point conversion field goal. Uh, going to be a situation where Case still needs to score two All touchdowns start. to get Offense. ahead. Number 15, five-yard penalty, first down. John Paduzzi moved early, so it will be a five-yard penalty and back the ball up. Now at the 24. WJ looking over to the near side of the field and clock is stopped at 13-24. Gets the signs in on the call. And Pugh in the shotgun with two receivers to the near side, one on the far side will throw. Pugh looking for Makosko, he's got him at the 37. Makosko is finally taken out of bounds by Dominic Size. Close to a first down. It looks like he will be short. He is one yard short. Second down and one at the 38. Thought he might have got it, but forward progress did not put him at the 39. So w &J with the lead by two scores. Again, just content to just try to burn as much clock as possible, take it down to 10 seconds on the play clock, and lots of running room. Oh, and Patricic to the 40, 45. And another w &J first down. Yeah, and again, just being able to use the multiple options you have coming out of that backfield if you're w &J. and Patricic has seen more action tonight than majority of the season. Coming into tonight's game, he had just 27 attempts on the season. And in tonight's game, he has been shown to be more prevalent in this W&J attack. Five seconds on the play clock. He'll get the carry again, bouncing it middle of the field, left side of the line, and able to get into Case Western Reserve territory at the 49, a pickup of six. The W and J offense that is known for its passing attack, but really late in games like this, running the football is so critical. It's a decently experienced offensive line up front. Why well, just stop the youngest player left tackle as a sophomore? But Angelo Fertini, a fifth year senior at right guard. Grant Cullen's been around. Adam Cazera, the senior at left guard. Pew. Throws near side. McCosco on the reception, but a flag is thrown as M Michael Kelly was taken down to the ground. It looks like a blindside block. Yeah, the big nose tackle for Case Western. He was calling for something there, and that looks to be what the call will be. Appears to be on Eddie Nakotra. Something that, you know, WD. Personal foul, blindside block, number 55. Offense, 15 yard penalty, second down. Some W and J really didn't need it all on that play. So we'll take another look. And it's right there. As Nakotra was pretty much maybe five yards separation away from Pew. So it backs the ball up now to the 36. Second and long. So 
So Pugh lines up in the pistol. Fake the handoff. Looking for Makoska, one-on-one coverage incomplete. Dominic Sines with good coverage from his cornerback spot. So now you have to be smart here if you are Case Western. You have it in a situation where it's third down, it's way behind the sticks, third and almost 20. Don't let anybody behind you. You can give up a handful of yards here. Don't let anybody behind you and beat you over the top and keep this drive going. Presidents need the 45 of Case Western to pick up a first. And WJ will just hand it off. And again, up to about the 41 yard line, and it'll bring on the punting unit. So WJ electing to just, you know, burn off as much clock as you really could on that drive. And not try to force it on third and third and long, third and about 20. So Ricky Hunter will punt it away. Hunter stands at his own 26, 27 yard line and is able to get it away. Good kick. He's fielded at the 25 and brought down right away. TJ Yoder with no room. W and J special teams wise today but very solid, and that was Nick Wilson. Yeah, I mean, not to mention the block punt that went for a touchdown in the first half. They have been on it. That third facet of the game kind of gets slept on. People don't always bring up the importance of special teams. Ball at the 25. 9.41 to go in the game. Shotgun for Fromberg. With time, over the middle, tipped and intercepted. Tipped by Volpatti, picked off by Simmons. Simmons with running room. Simmons dragged down at the 23. There is a flag thrown in the backfield. I but think, how about Zakai Simmons? Blocked the punt, now grabs an interception. Yeah, and I, I think unless it was a late hit to the quarterback, it's going to be a hold on the Case Western offense. I think they got the left tackle, so it'll be declined. Hey. Offense, number 60. Penalty is declined. Resolve the play, interception, first down. David Friedman, the one that held, but it didn't matter as Zakai Simmons gets the turnover wig on the sideline for the Presidents. The powdered wig being used to celebrate an interception and could celebrate a little bit more coming up for w &J. There is the celebration. Simmons fired up. As W and J takes over at the 17. Simmons was holding the ball a little loosely. He was kind of worried if you're W and J that he could fumble it if somebody from Case Western came up from behind him and punched the ball out. Now a discussion by the referees at about the 17 yard 23 line. 23 yard line. Yard line was where the ball and so we place at the 23 after discussion. Rain begins to fall a little bit after subsiding for the past 20 minutes or so. Pugh hands it off to Huss. Huss with room up the middle, past the 20, and now inside the red zone at the 19. And if you're W&J, why not? Just go back to the running game. It's worked for you. Yeah, I mean, you're you're flirting with the, the territory of the game. Under 10 minutes to go. It'll soon be under nine minutes as the, the clock ticks a few more seconds. You're up by 12 points. And it, it's going to get to a point, if you're able to punch this one in again and not just get held to a field goal, that you basically put this thing away. It would be very difficult for Case Western at that juncture of the game to mount the entire comeback. Huss once again on the carry, bounces it and now tries to cut it back to the middle of the field again and 
He's tackled down at the 19, the line of scrimmage on the play. But also just wanting to stay in bounds as well. Not completely bounce it to the boundary. Yep, keep that clock moving. Under eight and a half remaining. And a field goal would keep it at a two score game. That would make it obviously 15 instead of 12, but that's why the presidents will certainly try to push to all but finish this thing off. Third down and 17, third down and seven, rather, and you, you wonder with the ball at the 19 if this might be two down territory for WJ to go for it if they don't get it here and incompletion thrown from Jake Pugh. So is it two plays to make it four down territory? Doesn't seem to be the case. Ricky Hunter's on to attempt the field goal. So Pew rolled out and nobody was there. So avoid a bad decision and just chuck it out of bounds. Ricky Hunter is on to attempt a 36 yard field goal. This would be his season long. One for one on the day. Hunter from the near side hash. Hinsdale will hold it and it's blocked. Blocked by Case Western and huge play on special teams for the Spartans to get a hand there and force the errant kick. 38-26, Hunter's kick, no good. Blocked from off the edge. 7.44 to go in the fourth. It's time to rediscover the original Voodoo Brewing Company pub in beautiful downtown Meadville. Enjoy world-renowned craft beer, delicious and unique cocktails, and one-of-a-kind food items. Celebrate an Allegheny win with the newest fall cocktail, Gator Juice. And if you're looking to take your celebration to the next level or host a private event, look no further than the Voodoo Production Facility and Event Space for your next event. For more information, visit VoodooBrewery.com. This awesome gift is from my grandma. I use free pay policy from GB Life. What does it do? It accumulates cash value, helps protect my future insurability, and it may even earn dividends. What's so great about that? My policy will grow with me. Plus, I get access to the GB Life Youth Leaders Program, scholarships, and more. Oh. You might be interested in a GB Life annuity. You're probably thinking about retiring soon, right, Mrs. Jones? For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission, providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. So first down for Case Western after the blocked kick. Ball at the 20. What can the Spartans try to do? Still alive in this one. Fromberg looking to take a shot downfield for Coyne. He's got it. Noah Coyne, one-on-one -on -one coverage, makes the grab. Right past Bruno Fabricki to the 36. Timeout. Officials timeout for injury. Avery Keith is down in the backfield at the 10 yard line. Keith's been quiet today defensively for W and J, but what a shot to connect with Coin. Yeah, and Coin, a huge catch. The guy is a beast. Uh, he, he does it again to make a big play for this offense. Seeing on the replay there, though, uh, Keith going on a stunt. He actually came up the middle. Uh, tried to leap over the running back. Then it looked like he landed awkwardly uh, on his right knee. But he gets up looking to be all right. Not jogging off, but walking off definitively under his own power. No real limp. So we'll take another look at what happened to Keith. Is right there, yeah, just tried to step away from the block. Might have landed a little bit awkwardly. And Avery Keith able to walk off under his own power. So good to see there, but... It winds up Case Western. First down at the 34. Fromberg 
Plenty of time over the middle, incomplete. Bounced it into the direction of Ethan Dahlum. Had to take a couple of steps back because the rush was starting to get there from the presidents up the middle. And Fromberg, maybe because of that, throwing off of his back foot, made for the incompletion because Dahlum was open. Second and 10, 7.23 to go in the fourth. 12 point lead for W and J. The Case Western is threatening. Second down for Fromberg. Plenty of time, Fromberg over the middle. It is caught. Reception made, good enough for a first down. Looks like Coin again, the one that's able to make the grab. Set up shop now inside the 25. Fromberg lost his footing on that throw too, so luckily he was able to get rid of it before the knee hits the, hits the ground because remember, in college football, once that knee hits, you're down. You don't need to be contacted by a defensive player. And that's happened a couple of times today where Fromberg has really just been off balance. This one over the middle for Coin. Coin at the five. Coin at the three. First and goal. Case Western. Noah Coin continues to be a force. Almost his fourth touchdown of the game. You take away what Noah Coin has provided, and the score would be 38 to 7. Now, maybe they use somebody else in his absence, but he has been an absolute force out there against this W and J defense. Romberg hands it off. Dusler into the end zone. Touchdown, Case Western Reserve. The Spartans are not out of it yet. These guys just keep clawing back. They keep chipping away, as some would say. Down, two, down three scores multiple times tonight. Second time, though, tonight they have scored back-to-back uh, -to -back unanswered touchdowns. And now here we go again. They're going to just take the extra point here to try to make it a five-point game instead of six. W and J will get the ball back with about six and change. Petrosi's extra point is up and good. So we talked as if W and J was just going to try to keep running clock. Do everything that it could to really wind this thing out, but Noah Coin has said no. Ethan Dahlum as well found the end zone. Solid performance from Fromberg tonight as well. Jake Pugh with a solid pass over the middle. To McCosco as we take a look at some of our highlights. In this second half, it's been a electric game the whole entire way. Pugh found McCosco again on a long 53-yard score. That's the last time WJ scored. And how about Dolan? Pitching it out to Coin. Coin was able to score, and how about this one? What a strike that was intercepted by the Presidents to really set up W and J in a great spot to continue to put points on the board as this one's returned by DeRosa out to the 25. Still a lot of time here, but the way that W and J can milk the clock a few first downs will make things very, very difficult for Case Western to have a chance to get the football back or even be in a position to win this game. But still six minutes to go. And you got a great defense if you're Case. You have to feel pretty solid right now. Yeah, I mean, you you have the great defense. If they're going to show it at any time tonight, it's got to be right now. Pugh hands it off. Not much going. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe one yard. So not much there on first down. It brings up second and long. After just a pickup of maybe the length of the football. And if you're W&J as well, it's not like a touchdown would tie it for Case Western. A touchdown could win it. So you can't be very conservative in terms of play calling. You still got to be aggressive. Pugh with time, feeling the pressure. 
One on one coverage for Produzzi, incomplete. Pugh overshot him and flag in the backfield, Austin. There is a flag as there's a lot of pressure being delivered by Case Western off the edge. Wow, roughing the passer. Number 23, defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. The pressure got to Pugh, forced the penalty. Jake Summers, the guilty party. Huge call. Yet another point to make in these situations. We'll get a better look on this replay here. Doesn't seem like I, much. <laughs> oh, I don't even know if I want to dive into this one. That, that's my, my thoughts on that. Maybe close to a hit to the head? I, I mean, unless we miss it there at the end, I got no idea what the thought process was on that one. Uh, didn't look like much there at all as Pew hands it off. Owen Patricic on a short gain. Makes his way for a couple. So we're talking five and change now. Still left on the clock. Second and seven at the 43. Case Western does have three timeouts. So still plenty of opportunities to stop the clock. Ten on the play clock for Pew. Snaps it at seven. Oh, and Patricic, not much there. Only about a yard. Multiple defenders were there. AJ Dadowski. As well as a couple others. Sean Torres to force third down. It was an 18 point game to start this fourth quarter. Four minutes and change to go. It'll be under four likely by the time this football is snapped on what is, to this point, the biggest third down in this game. But in the second half, W&J has been pretty much money at converting on third downs. And Case today, Western's got to stand up one more time. Case Western outscored its opponents 54-7 to in the fourth entering today. But Sir Nudo keeps the drive alive on the reception from Jake Pugh into Case Western territory. Out. Officials time out for injury. Sakalo is down, but now being able to walk over to the sideline after taking the shot, delivering the hit to Cernudo. Huge play for Zach Cernudo, the junior, making his ninth catch of the year. And that's a huge catch across the middle. And that's one you have to be tough in those situations to haul it in because a receiver or a running back going out for a pass across the middle, you know that you're going to take a big hit the moment you do, especially on a third down in a key game situation. Case Western still has all three timeouts, but one more first down from W and J will make things really, really difficult. You're probably looking at two first downs to seal it? I think without question if you get two first downs. Clock rolls at 320. Pistol formation for Jake Pugh. Hands it off. And a good run to the 40. Coach Sirianni did not like it at the very end of it there. It seemed like there was a little bit of extra punching of the football at the end of the play. Timeout. Case Western Reserve, their first time out of the half. Please set the game clock to 3.03. 3.03 on the game clock. 3.03 on the clock as Case Western uses its first timeout. 38 to 33. WJ leads it here on KDK Plus. For us, this is not just a job. This is our mission, providing great patient care, delivering babies, healing hearts, 
detecting cancer early, stitching wounds, and holding your hand through it all. Proudly serving our community for over 125 years, Washington Health System. Ball at the 41 after Case Western used its first time out of the half. 3.03 still to go on the clock. Jake Pugh, the quarterback, able to connect with Jacob McCosco a couple of times for big plays. Two touchdowns for McCosco. As Pugh hands it off. Patricic moves the pile forward. Able to get to about the 39. Timeout on the field. Case Western Reserve, their second timeout of the half. 2.59 on the game clock. 2.59. Just about two yards. As Case Western Reserve looks to try to get a stop here, which would be critical. If not, W&J can run this clock down to maybe about a minute, 40 seconds left. If the presidents aren't able to get another first down. Yeah, so they, they take their second time out there, but they have to be ready to go for these next plays. And for W&J, you could get in a situation as it is third and three. This is the type of spot you think to yourself, do we just try to pound the rock and make this Case Western front seven stop us? Or do we surprise them a little bit with a short, safe pass, but also run the risk of an incompletion that stops the clock. Case Western won last year's matchup 14 to 10. W and J looking to try to right the ship and flip it around and get back time into out. the win column. Washington and Jefferson, it's their second time out of the half. And w and J calls timeout, wanting to talk about this one before a very critical third and three. Man, Gina, what are you seeing down on the sideline as it's a huge Huge call coming out for the presidents. This is huge. And I got something else that's huge, too. Eddie Nakotra, the junior, 6'4", 265 at a North Catholic. He has been absolutely neutralizing Caden Tong. I think I heard you call Caden Tong's name one time tonight. He's been a dynamo defensively for this team. And this unsung hero, Eddie Nakotra, a key player. And whether or not Washington and Jefferson comes out with a win. That's a great point, man, Gino. He, he's been somebody that has been so critical for Case Western. Seven sacks, eight and a half tackles for loss on the year. Leading tackler. Third and three for Pugh. Fake the handoff, Pugh's pass is incomplete. Not able to connect with Raymond Holmes. Would have been close to a first down if so. And now a huge decision to make for the presidents if they want to go for it. Holmes just had the ball slip right through his hands. See, I, I think now you're going to see the punting unit come on. I was going to say if you were going to keep the offense out there, they probably would have just run the football on that third down play because it would have, A, made Case Western guess at what they were going to do, also made them burn an extra timeout. And in this case, they get to save the timeout because they tried the, the short safe pass to their credit, and it falls incomplete. A little surprised they didn't run it? I am a little bit surprised. But... I could also understand trying to catch the defense off guard in that situation. Here we go. Case Western with a big shot beginning the drive at the 15 yard line with 2.49 to go, two timeouts. A five point game. The offense comes out onto the field. Fromberg, you'd imagine where the ball's going. Noah Coyne has been a huge dynamic threat at wide receiver. All eyes on him would not be surprised if WNJ tries to double team Coyne. Fromberg looking in Wykowski's direction, incomplete. A lot of pushing and shoving there. Wykowski wanted a flag. Malconey had the coverage, but no call. Yeah, Fromberg was looking that way the whole time. There was some contact there, but in a game like this, 
we're going to see some contact and not be called. Yeah, that one's certainly a 50-50 one. You, you can chalk it up to incidental. Second and 10. Fromberg with plenty of time. Flushed out of the pocket. Delivers for coin, incomplete. Went off the hand of the 6-4 target. Two incompletions brings up third and 10. And you gotta have in your mind right now, it's going to take two plays defensively to get this thing done if you're W and J. And on Case Western side of things, don't worry about getting that first down right here. You can get six or seven or eight yards and have a chance on fourth down. Fromberg, passes caught, Wykowski. Trying to get there to the marker, but can't do so. Huge tackle made by Bruno Fabricki. It sets up fourth down in Case Western. Timeout. Case Western. Calls timeout. Their final timeout. That is a half. potential game winning tackle by Bruno Fabricki if W and J wins this game. Clock. He had one Cable. guy to beat to get to two the five. outside. Witowski would have gotten that first down. Great play in the open field. Just an open field tackle you needed to have if you were W and J and just a strong wrap up to be able to make the stop. Commendable effort from the sophomore, 6'2 corner, Bruno Fabricchi, went to Albert Gallatin High School. Leader in interceptions on the team. Fourth down and two, needing the 25. No timeouts left for Case Western. This is the ball game. That guy's loving it. You see him on the screen. He's hyping the place up. He's excited for the president. He's having fourth he, down. He's having himself a time. He's enjoying his Halloween weekend. Will the presidents be able to do so and get a stop? Case Western trying to extend the game. Fourth and two at the 23. Fromberg, quick pass caught. Drive saves the lies. Nurick on the reception. Makes his way to the 28. Sim Case Western quickly to the line. Simple concept there, but a much more difficult throw and catch in that situation than it looks. Fromberg looking near side the whole way, deflected incomplete. Justin Johns almost grabbed it for a game ceiling interception. Yeah, he had his eyes on Witowski across the middle. We'll see on the replay here, 19 comes into the screen and he had separation. He did not have his eyes on 21 in black, who almost ended this thing. They didn't look like Fromberg ever saw Johns at all on that play. As Johns was able to knock it down, knock it away. 2.06 to go, second down. Fromberg feeling the pressure, Avery Keith got him. Avery Keith with a huge sack was injured earlier on in the quarter, comes back and makes one of the biggest plays defensively for the Presidents. Yeah, and now your offense sort of disheveled. Third down, you're way behind the sticks. That was a huge sack. Your entire receiving core had to run all the way back. Quick pass caught by Dahlum. Dahlum spinning off of defenders to the 25. Case Western's not even at the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, both sides have to be smart in these situations. No timeouts for Case Western. So they're just basically going to throw up a prayer here. Fourth down in about 14. Fourth down, needing the 38. Fromberg, plenty of time. Surveys the field, deep downfield, jump ball incomplete. Noah Coyne could not bring it in. Wanted a flag, didn't get it, and WNJ holds. The presidents are going to walk away with an upset victory. Yeah, we'll get the, the replay here. It was good protection up front. W and J just rushing four. Throw to the right side. The coverage was there. Y you go to your top target, Noah Coyne. That has to be the decision in that spot. And I think that was clean all around. F Fabricki on the coverage. And I'm, I'm glad it's a guy like him because he had the huge tackle moments ago on third down. And of course, he's one of the only guys, probably the only guy on that side that could stand up to somebody like Noah Coins. The 6-2 corner ends up making the big play in coverage, although 
a bit overthrown. But Noah Coyne on that side, he's he's got to be the guy you go to in that situation on fourth down with the game on the line. That's what Case Western Reserve tried to do, but not able to bring it in as W and J. It's the best formation in football, victory formation. We'll need to snap it just one more time to put this one in the books. Jake Pugh checks the clock, takes a knee, Washington and Jefferson. 38 to 33, the Presidents win it. And hand Case Western Reserve its second loss of the season. A great game from Cameron Stadium. 38 33. In week nine action, the Presidents put it all on display today. Yeah, and it, it ended up being a, a great one. One that W and J, they controlled the entire time, but there were moments whenever Case Western almost clawed right back and, and took the lead in this game. But W and J had firm control on it. They didn't give it up completely. They come out victorious. So credit to the Presidents after a tough loss last week, a tough, a tough couple of weeks. They get back in the win column against a team who is right there with them in the President's Athletic Conference standings. And this one really just an instant classic. Tons of highlights in the second half. McCoskey was really good. Jake Pugh led the offense and took care of the football, delivered a strike on the 53-yard bomb to McCoskey. And Jake Pugh is our player of the game, standing by Robert Mangino. That's my quarterback right there, baby. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm here with Jake Pugh, the player of the game. Congratulations you. with your feet through the air. You did what it took. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that's a great team over there, a great football team. They do things so well. Made it tough for us. And our offensive line, they did a great job. We ran the ball well today. And, I mean, I, my job's so easy when I throw it up. And, you know, I've got two, two of the best receivers in the conference out there. And then, you know, running backs, O-line, everybody. So This <laughs> offensive line, amazing tonight, yeah. considering the, the little pressure that you had all night long. It's been all year. They do a great job. I mean, I, I feel like I've hardly been pressured at all this year. Um, I don't I don't think I had a, I don't think they sacked me tonight if I'm correct. Um, they do a great job. I can't thank them enough. Talk about the run game. Coach was saying that you had to be able to establish the run. You were able to do that tonight. Yeah, we've been looking to do it uh, a lot recently. You know, we just need to find an identity in the run game. And we have like seven great running backs. Like you just saw tonight, we rotate a bunch of guys. And like I said, the O-line did a great job. So it makes my job easy because then they start focusing on that and then I could keep it and go around the edge. So congratulations uh, with being player of the game. You have an invitation to go to the U.S. Bank for the All-America Bowl. Congratulations on that. That's awesome. I didn't know that at all. So thank you very much. I really appreciate that. You are very welcome. Go ahead and celebrate with the team. Thank all you very right. much. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, appreciate the time. Fellas, Jake Pugh, player of the game, did it on offense, running the ball, passing the ball. Clearly the guy tonight. Yeah, he was fantastic. Thomas Jefferson, native and graduate, did a solid job today against Case Western. Took care of business for the presidents at home. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about him coming in. He was one of the, the players to look out for uh, on either side, and he certainly lived up to that billing. Uh, he was making play after play tonight, whether it was through the air, whether it was with his legs like he did early on. And again, he's a small dude, 5'11", 195. That, that is undersized as a quarterback. He plays much bigger than that, though. Uh, he certainly plays up to stature uh, compared to his size. Uh, he came into tonight's game leading the PAC in passing touchdowns, completion percentage, second in passing yards, and we wondered, would they look that good against this Case Western defense that is ranked high, ranked at the top of the PAC and ranked very high nationally? Not only did they do that, he did it with ease. Uh, I, I thought it was really a strong showing from Jake Pugh and this W&J offense all night long. It was, and it was a great response after the loss against CMU last week. Both teams with two losses on the year. Washington and Jefferson improves to 6-2 and two overall. Case Western's five-game winning streak is now over and drops to 6-2. and two. Thank you to our entire crew that made today's broadcast possible, including Jake Mislipchuk and Ryan Milan inside the production truck. Our assistant producer, Madison Benedict. The Monarchy Brothers running our cameras, as well as Evan Laurent down on the sideline with Robert Mangino. And Ryan Peters running a sideline camera. As well for Robert Mangino and Donnie Chedrick. I'm Austin Bechtel. Six. So long from Washington, Pennsylvania. 
The Presidents are victorious 38 to 33 against Case Western here on KDK Plus. We'll see you next week from Beaver Falls as Washington and Jefferson heads to Geneva. Coverage next week, 1 o'clock kickoff on Saturday. KDK Plus action of the Presidents Athletic Conference. I'm Austin.